So job numbers came in today for February of 2024. And I just have one question to ask. What in the world just happened? <laughs> Honest question. What in the world just happened? Um, yesterday, we were talking on stream, right? Yesterday, we were talking on stream saying, and I said specifically, not saying, but I said, you know, if job numbers come in, above expectation of what they were expecting most likely we are going to get a massive three to five percent rally and mike over there was saying no we're gonna get a down day tomorrow and he was right i have no idea why this in the world happened i have no idea why this in the world happened but it happened so we're gonna talk about this today guys and of course with me i have mike what you what, I, I get muted on the one yes. we're talking about me yes. being right yes. and then uh yes because because you never let me get through my intro so i'm muting nah. you until i i, I introduce you <laughs> <laughs> hey for every problem there is a reasonable and thought out solution the mute button <laughs> yes but um i honestly did not expect this run when i saw the jobs numbers you called it yes what do you mean run? yes yes i said but i said so I was looking at it from the volatility of the price action and how VIX was setting up. However, when jobs came out and they basically slammed it to the point where I was interested in buying, didn't get executed, then rotated back up, I was like, okay, well, 1% day. 1% like a green day, right? Uh -huh. I was not expecting a 300-point reversal in the S&P come 1 o'clock. I'm just yep. like, what is with these 300-point moves? Like roughly, right? 298 today, 311 before. I'm like... What on earth is wrong? Like, this is very, very, very hard to understand. Well, it's hard for me to understand the market, right? Because I haven't really experienced this type of, okay, we're going to blow out jobs, retrace a little bit. Okay, higher, higher, low, right? Higher, 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 low. Make a new all-time high and then instantly, like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock rolls around and 300 point reversal to the downside, rotate through all the volume profiles. And then just like, I try to catch like the vol value area low and it's like, nope, we're just gonna like completely go from value area low straight down another like 61 ticks. And I'm like, and screw you market. So here's the thing. I have no idea why this occurred though, because it didn't occur when job reports came out. It occurred much later. So I'm very interested that maybe we could come across a solution or at least a reason um, in this live stream as to why this occurred. But in addition, in addition to that, I also have a bunch of news to cover as well. And actually something that we didn't cover yesterday regarding the CREs and a statement from Jerome Powell himself from Financial Juice, uh, where he said something about CREs and banks. So we're going to cover that well, as well, guys. Hang on. We're going to cover that. And of course, we have, we, we don't really have that much earnings today. So let's cover one of, one of the earnings that um, happened yesterday that we want to cover today. And that is Costco because Costco kept falling today. And as you all know, Costco is a, is a massive juggernaut. And it's a company that a lot of people want to buy. And even though their dividend isn't really that good, they give out special dividends on occasion. So I'm going to talk about all of that today. Mike, really quick before I do, I guess, the outro to the intro. Go on. So the funny thing is, like, if, I love how Jerome Powell mentions about it. And then NYCB, it's like, oh, we're, we're, we're fine. Everything's fine. And it's like, doink, right on the nine-day moving average. And Monday is March 11th. I'm like... Hey, you know, run up right into the March 11 date. What possibly could go wrong? And that statement, I don't know if you know the statement I'm talking about, but we'll cover it. We'll cover no, it. I'm, I've been living under a rock today. I literally did. Well, this happened yesterday. And I saw. This happened yesterday. Uh, this, this statement really? happened. Yes, yes. I, I, I will show everybody. So, guys, make sure to, of course, like, subscribe, comment. It really does help here on Rumble. Guys, to, next week, today, that's it. The partnership program's over. The partnership program ends next Thursday. So uh, we will continue the streams. I'm going to say this uh, right here, right now. I'll say it also at the end, but we will continue the streams, but we're going to change it from on a daily basis, five days a week, to just Tuesday and, and Thursday. Um, 
And then if there's anything specific that we want to cover, like CPI, FOMC, that kind of stuff, if, if it lands outside of those days, then we'll just do an extra stream for the week. But we are going to continue this and we are going to do duo, uh, like dual streaming to YouTube and Rumble. However, we are going to strictly prioritize Rumble when it comes to streaming because you guys are awesome. There's always so many people watching on Rumble. It's absolutely crazy. So yeah, again, thank you guys so much for watching on Rumble. I cannot believe that. Hey, we got the partner ship um i was actually i was i was very I, not cynical i just i really wasn't expecting it but you know i'm, I'm glad we did and I, and I gotta thank mike for uh for even Kicking pushing me down to do the it. stairs yeah because i would though i was the one that i was hesitant for you're the one that actually said let's do it so i'm happy for that i'm happy for that so guys so question hang on hang on hang on hang on can i get through my prayer yeah okay so guys like always let's do a quick prayer of course he gave us everything and the least we could do is say thank you. So, our Father, my Lord, Christ Jesus, there is a lot of uncertainty right now. A lot of uncertainty. I mean, yesterday we heard that Biden wants to give uh, an assistant down payment for $25,000, which could cause a lot of problems. So, you know, it has to go through Congress. Thank goodness it has to go to Congress. I pray, I pray that it does not happen. Because if it does, things are going to hit the fan real quick. And also, my Lord Jesus Christ, it's in your hands. No matter what happens, whether a recession happens, whether things continue to go up, whether things get hard, it's in your hands. I trust you. We trust you. In your precious name I pray. Amen. All right, guys, let's get started with the news. Let's get started with the news. And, uh, oh boy, it's uh, already looking. I have no idea what's happening. NASDAQ leads S&P Dow lower amid profit-taking in tech mixed job reports. Okay, the profit-taking in tech. So what, people were just selling off tech stocks? Which, honestly, isn't that surprising, right? You would you would expect that, after especially yeah. NVIDIA, right? Hold on. We're, ta we're talking about NVIDIA. What have I been saying in beating the dead carcass of the ho of the lion that ate the damn cow at this point? Or the I have horse, no idea you know? what I have no idea what that idiom is supposed to be about, but sure. I don't know. But um, the video, whatever I talked about it till I'm blue in the face. Market makers will keep having to buy shares to offset option expiry, and they finally got sick and tired of it. I think. I think market makers were like, okay, we're putting on way too much money into this one damn stock. Let's sell it off and screw everyone out of the premiums, right? Because, like, let, let, let's give some to the bears so they keep shorting this thing so we can take more money from them next week. But let's let's give a, a little haircut to everything because I'm like, the video down 6% today, losing the angle of ascent that it had. And the question is, do you come back down to about the $727 mark on the video? I'm very curious Which, to look at NVIDIA, actually. By the way, guys, I lowered Mike a little bit. Let me know if uh, if that's too low or is that just right? Because while I was watching yesterday's stream, like editing it, I realized you were very, very loud at some point. So I'm, I'm lowering you to just a smidge. So if you guys could tell me if he sounds good or if I'm a little bit too loud as well. I know that when sometimes I get, you know, flustered, like yesterday, I scream. But, you know, um, just let me know that. But yeah, I, I, it's, it's, it's very, very interesting. Now, I wonder if they do mention Nvidia over here. Uh, I don't think they do actually. But let's, uh, let's jump real, real quick to Nvidia because at this point in the game, I mean, Nvidia is the stock market, right? Nvidia is the wow. Okay, I didn't even realize it fell to like five point five five percent. You know, it's funny too. I literally and got two percent. What was that? And look at post market. Yeah, yeah, two uh, two point one five. I literally got a notification on our ex um, on our ex uh, account, Mike. Somebody yeah. saying his name is Retro Noob. <laughs> Retro Noob saying, uh, uh, "Fatal Investing has has the downturn begun? Short Nvidia." And my response was, "I think that's a little bit too early to call, with only a few red days." Um, so we'll see what happens about that. people people right now are looking at the market and you know we, we've been seeing this even with the short interest right people have been short interest have been um have been du doubling down essentially and, and you've talked about this that that bears are just doubling down when it comes to the short interest yeah so i don't i don't know this may just be you know i look at this if, if we take a look at nvidia specifically on the one month I don't want to fall into the trap, into the bear trap of, of 
you see, you see, it's coming down, it's coming down, and then next week it just goes, doof, right? It goes, shoots right back up. So I don't want to fall into that kind of trap because more often than not, it does happen, and I don't want to be caught with my, with my pants down, just saying, just saying. So Well, I do want to pivot to the CPI expectations. Because they do well, have them posted, and you being Mr. Guess CPI right every damn time. Well, I like CPI uh, more than job numbers. Uh, but uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I, I don't want to pivot just yet, though. I want to stay on this just, just a little bit, and I and I kind of want to pivot to CPI after we take a look at the job numbers. Um, right. You know, just to keep everything in track. So Wall Street finished lower after a choppy session on, on Friday. It really didn't start that way. In fact, if we come back over here... Uh, if we come back over here to, um, should I take a look at futures or just the S&P? Uh, uh, do, no. do the futures because you'll get a better indication of the wiki move. Okay, so let's do futures, S&P futures. And if we take a look at that, why isn't my mouse moving? I think it's about to die or something. But if we take a look at this on the one day. So basically, guys, this thing opened up at 930. You can see it was a massive, massive pump um, on March 8th, right? There, massive, massive pump. And then... I, well, at 11 a.m., it just started to crash. It just started to crash. We had, we had a little bit of a, of a rebound at around 2 o'clock, right? Right there, 2 o'clock. But at the end of the day, we just ended lower. Ended the day down 0.65. Well, this is on the S&P, um, on the S&P 500 futures. On the actual S&P, we ended 0.65 basically on the day. So yeah, they ended flat. They, the Fridays traditionally don't have movement. On, I mean, there really uh, isn't much. Hours. Right, there really isn't much happening. But it's uh, it's very interesting though the fact that Nvidia has fallen and even Costco today fell, fell as well. Which, as you all know, Costco is a company that uh, <laughs> it's, I really would like to to sink my teeth more into it. Um, I used to hold it, but I recently sold it because I'm like. It's gone up so much, and I have like two shares. There's no point in me holding this. So, so yeah. But let's continue reading. Uh, let's continue reading the this thing. So let's see. As investors reacted to a mixed job numbers report by booking some profits in the technology space, that's not surprising, right? I mean, that's the biggest space right now where most capital gains have actually occurred, which has been the end of the market gain so far this year. The Nasdaq Composite was down 1.2%, S&P 0.7, and Dow 0.2. Quote, today the unthinkable... <laughs> I don't want to read this paragraph. I, 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 the fact that it starts with those four words already has me pissed off <laughs> unthinkable happened a mon um, momentary lapse of bullishness and semiconductor can someone say bubble please um, I, I just, alex king of uh alex Se king Se of cast of, of cestrian cestrian capital Sestrian. research told seeking alpha the philadelphia semiconductor index sold off around three percent today it's up around 20 percent year today yeah see th that's exactly what i'm saying and by the way I, I am reading chat. Shout out to HC, being the first one. He also says, short the market. And um, uh, Go says, hello, rumble chat only, referring to when we dual stream. Oh, how was your flight, um, uh, HC. HC? Yeah, how, how was your flight, my guy? HC says, amen, amen, of course. And uh, I heard a rumor of a split on NVIDIA. And the one that the one that told me about um, retro, uh, what was it called again? What were you called again? Hang on a minute. The person that responded to me or that or that sent me that uh, re retro noob, that was HC. <laughs> oh. That was HC on um in um on Twitter. Classic name. On Twitter, yeah. So yeah, super bubble. That's super bubble, right? It's the it's it's like the SpongeBob dirty bubble meme when he just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh so. my god. <laughs> you're at Dis uh, so you're down on my neck of the woods. What? HC's at Disney. Well, Disney oh. like Orlando or Disney like California? That's a good question. I would, I would, I would, I would hope it's the when real Disney. Disney is usually Florida. It's right? usually like Florida. That. Yeah. Usually the other Disney, they just call it Disneyland. Yeah. Not not Disney World because Disney World is yeah. is the main one. But apparently, Ghost has heard a rumor of a split on Nvidia. That's interesting. Uh, maybe we could do a little bit more. I see recently. that. I I, I, I see that. See too. that when the stock is like just going up like an insane amount. Well, maybe not after today, but but yeah. No, I feel you. I feel you on that one. Um, so let's keep on reading this. Uh, I just, I just, I absolutely love that that sentence. The Philadelphia Semiconductor Index sold off around three percent today. It is up around twenty percent year to date so far. Now you, uh, we can call this simply catching its breath. Yeah, pretty much. This is basically 
a pullback, a nice healthy pullback, catching his breath. The analysts noted that the overall market wasn't harmed by the dip in this leading sector, saying that the S&P Dow and Russell indices quote, we're each more or less a nothing burger in the week. I love how people think or I love how people want this massive rise to just keep going. The base case is the massive rise. Like that's right. your, ba that's like your base assumption. Right. Yeah. And that, that right there is horrifying, right? That right there is absolutely horrifying. The fact that people want to normalize, I mean, I would argue they have already normalized it, but the fact that they want to normalize just this kind of rally, non-stop rally forever and ever and ever because the only thing that matters is stonks go up. That to me is, I mean, I don't even say horrifying. It's just, it's ignorance. It's a precursor. It's it, a precursor yeah. to the bubble. Yep. Yep. It's the, it's the people getting too comfortable thing. So yeah, well, it's always the same case, right? So I, again, I didn't trade when the last inversion of the yield curve was, but I'm like, if I have to bet against the yield curve, which I did one time in my life and got absolutely like wrecked, nuked. like nuked, wrecked, whatever you want to insert word here. And we also fought the Fed. I'm like, let's see, what is the market doing? Exactly what I did just winning for now. So it's, you're winning for, and I love the comment about when he goes into the second paragraph, we must ask what the bear army now whoa, say whoa, about whoa, whoa, market whoa, breath. Whoa, read it, read it, read it. So, so looking ahead, King concluded, for now the market remains pointing upwards, which by the way, you have said that too. Given that the Russell 2000 is starting to participate, we must ask what will the bear army now say about market breath? I don't well, give a flying you know what about market breath. I just look at an inverted yield curve, Warren Buffett not getting in, Apple being weak, and March 11th every bank about to be back where we were march a year ago i'm like and nycb is gonna survive this how explain to me please well let's then we're gonna disregard we're gonna disregard that bank then the next one we're gonna disregard that bank well um, I, I mean i sent one you big one goes. last night i sent you uh a, a, a screenshot on telegram of a, i believe it was a swedish bank that was also coming down a lot i don't know if you got that uh, I don't know if I did. Let me pull it up. It, it was late last night. It was maybe like one like midnight. But segueing perfectly because the following paragraph is exactly what we're, what we're going to talk about next. In the fact that today was job numbers and um, oh, not that. U.S. economy adds a robust 275,000 jobs. Yet unemployment rate climbs to 3.9 percent. And I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta point out. Uh, this uh, user on Twitter that said something hilarious. The unemployment spiked to 3.9%, but we had 275,000 new jobs created in February. Explain this to me. <laughs> Explain this to me like I'm five years old. Yeah. How very, the very good question. It's, it's a, that's a very, very good, good question. question. Yeah. I like this guy. He's, he's really, really cool. Um, hopefully one day he'll be able, he'll be watching the, the stream, but. Well, I love the guy. Next guy says, uh, yeah, right people here. are losing their careers, layoffs, and forced to get multiple jobs. They want, they never wanted to differentiate that in the report, but that's the reality. Yep. Yep. Dumpster fire. They want you to believe they are creating jobs, but they're, but they also need the unemployment rate to rise so they can cut rates. Yeah. Yeah. That one doesn't make sense. Well, because it's more implying, it's more implying the fact that, um, the numbers are cooked. That's more of, the, of what that one's implying. Um, so, I don't know about that one. Well, take away five jobs, add two jobs. Yay, we added two jobs. Yep. And they're only fo basically only focusing on the on <laughs> yeah, the on the. We, other. we don't report right. the losses. Right. Uh, it's like over your head. Why right. are your liar pants on? <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, so, shout uh, out to this guy. You know. I love I love the meme that was down there. How dare you? <laughs> you lost your comfy uh, white collar job, and now you work day shifts at Mickey at, at Mickey D's and night shifts at Seven <laughs> Eleven. Oh boy, but yeah, this guy he he's great. He's great. I I don't follow him. I should though, but he's he's great. There's a lot of stuff that he says that just makes me giggle every single time I see it. But yeah, guys, uh, the U.S. economy how added two hundred seventy-five thousand jobs. Um, if we remember, expectation for this, uh, well. This is where I, I said I was wrong, right? This is where I said, uh, in fact, it's the title of the stream. By the way, shout out to the 19 of you guys watching right now. Amazing. 
And uh, Angelica, your mom let you get a Rumble account? All right, great. Thanks, cousin. cousin. That's my cousin. Yeah. Yep, that's my cousin. Love her so much. But if you guys remember, um, yesterday I was saying that if we beat, if we beat this forecast of 198,000 jobs, we're going to get a three to five percent market rally today. Which I think we would. Boy, was I wrong. Yeah. If no, hold on. You weren't technically wrong. You said we didn't. Neither of us expected unemployment to tick up. That was a shocker to me. Even when I saw unemployment tick three point nine versus three point seven, that was a little bit of a shocker. But wouldn't and that be a good also, thing? But wouldn't that be a good thing? The market's gonna convolute everything as a good thing but, at but, this but point. No, 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 no. But do you understand why I'm asking? Wouldn't that be a good thing? Yes and no, because it'd be the soft landing approach. But the problem is, take it out of, take it into context of employment, right? Okay, so unemployment ticks up sharply to the highest rate in two years. Let's That's see that. That's why it spooked them. Let's it's see that. It's the highest it's been in two years. Let's see that. Uh, yeah. Uh, is it really? Uh, no, w one year. It was upwards of 3.9%. Um, in March of yeah. March 11, 2023. March, March 11th. Oh, know. wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You could not, you could not have done that better. Wow. Yeah. God's just knocking on the door, just throwing idioms out there, basically being like, here's the helicopter, guys. Analogies, but yeah. But yeah, God, God is just being like, God is just being like, yo, uh, here is, here is exactly, guys, what you, what you guys are saying. I'm giving you exactly everything that you want to see. That everything is pointing to, you know, like in the Old Testament, every, every prophecy points to Jesus Christ. Well, right now, every prophet, everything that we're seeing right now points to literally Monday. So this is going to be. Oh my goodness. I love how I love how I just hovered over March 11th and you were like March 11th. I'm like, "What? That's so crazy." That's so crazy. But yeah, this is uh this kind of unemployment is going up. I just my issue with this is wouldn't this be considered a good thing? I mean, this would just mean that yes, interest rates no. would fall, right? And the Again, it depends, right? It depends how the Fed interprets it. Depends on everything, right? So mm -hmm. it's one data point. Yeah, it don't is. stress out about one data point. Well, yeah. they are though. Clearly, they are. Well, market decided to fall on something else because they didn't. They didn't fall on that number, right? They just spooked them a little bit, but it didn't really manifest into anything. Where you can see like manufacturing payroll shrinking. I'm like, okay, that I'm seeing that. Like I, I I'm working in that the industry and I see that. Oh dude. But oh dude, you want to know something on my job? Sure. It's kind of horrifying. So we have two lines, right? We have two lines and let me guess they're going down to one. No. Um it's it's not that bad. Uh, no, they, they they can't go down to one because some things can't be made on line one, but some that can be made on line on line four. But well, you can always move people around. No, it's actually worse. No, yeah, but the but the machinery is is different. And on, trust me. But yeah. but basically, okay. but basically, what's happening at work right now is that line four. So line one works twenty four seven essentially. Except for Sundays, okay, three but it works three shifts, right? Th three shifts. Line four works first shift and third shift. That's it. There is no second why shift. Third? Wait, why third shift? There is no second. There's nobody to work for second shift. There's okay. nobody can, to work for yeah, second shift. Second shift is traditionally in the industry the hardest shift to staff for. Yeah, because so. it's it's from like one thirty to ten. And it's, it's it's a oh, really really often. Yeah, from our from me is one thirty to to ten thirty. It's usually why it is, but you know, I, I, I do see that man. I absolutely do, do see that, you know, manufacturing payrolls also coming down. Um, but something to know here though, this number got revised down. This is something that people are not talking about. The fact that, uh, job numbers actually got revised down right there, revised from 353,000 to 229. No one's talking about that. I mean, Sticks is. Um, I, I, I do remember Sticks talking about that this morning. Can you go to the, not, to the private payrolls, uh, the 177, what did it get revised why down from? Why, why can't I click on this and open it up so I could see the revision? I don't know why. Uh, you have to go to the left. You have to non-farm payrolls. That is non-farm payrolls. What do you mean? You have to hit that in order to go down to see the previous revision. Oh, right oh. Okay, there you go. No, but that's incorrect. This says, where do I go? 
Okay. No, no, no. You're right. You're right. Look. No, 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 no. It got three, revised from three. three. Oh, I see. Yep, yep, yep. From from three fifty three to two twenty nine. That's a so massive what, uh, revision. Yeah, that's a massive. To be fair, though, to be fair, in so January is it, is it they, they finally can't cook the books anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you really can't say that because look at this. Yes, this one right here got revised downward, but this one here got revised upwards, right from two sixteen to three three three. So I. You know, most of these, yes, most of these are either in line or slightly or, or revised down, as you see right over here, revised down, staying the same, revised down. But there are some instances. Let me see. Okay, no, never mind. Most of these are re revised down. I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I take it back. back. Take it they back. Go back. Okay, show some more. Show some more. It actually, it's actually, yeah, it's it's a mix, but it's definitely leaning more towards being revised yeah, down. Yeah, get the negative revisions. But regardless, it's like. With job numbers, it's it's kind of like you become numb. You become desensitized. To I it. agree. Yep. And the unemployment rate is kind of an interesting factor because that. you can't cheat amount of uh, open uh, people claiming that they don't they can't find jobs in the sense of like sitting on unemployment benefits, right? So people that are not being able to find jobs or just don't want to find jobs because it's around tax season. They go collect their tax refund from last year around this time, and then they just go sit on it for three, four months. That's what happens in our location. And by the way, people will just quit for three months. And by the way, uh, no, we were at 3.9% again back in October. Or, yeah, back, back in October the, where this shown was in um, November, but the unemployment was for October, and it was showing 3.9%. So okay, we were so there. Not, but then they revised it down. No, they didn't. Oh, no, 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 no. This is not get this is not get revised. Guarantee okay. you that this is not get get revised. But no no, it's just it's just really, really I, so so okay. So okay, it wasn't unemployment that brought the markets down towards the end because obviously uh, job numbers came out, mar markets rallied. It only started coming down afterwards towards the like one, uh, like 11 o'clock or something like that. So unless they had more time to digest what was actually happening, I don't, I still have no idea what in the world caused the downturn. Again, it's just guys, a small fall. I would not say that this is HC. I know you want this to be the, the catalyst for the, you know, for the, for, for the recession. And man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it, my dude, but one you know one data point isn't really telling us much of anything right but um and also we yeah. had uh we had biden coming out today saying we just keep going up inflation keeps going down no i hate when he says that i hate oh, i uh, hate the you financial more poetic you were more poetic what your prediction comes true on Tuesday. Oh, oh, baby. Actually, great segue, Mike. Great segue. So let's take a look at what uh, inflation is looking like for next week because we are getting inflation numbers, guys, for next week. And we are going to live stream it, which is great, which is great. Also, Ghost, I love how you're just posting your, uh, your, your, <laughs> your contracts. We'll take a look at that in just one second. Uh, which, by the way, goes. I don't know if uh, if you caught wind, but I did make a. I was about to say a Rumble channel. I did make um, a Discord. I just want to pretty it up first, right? I want to get all the all the moderation done. You know, all the all the rules set up, that kind of stuff, right? So, yeah. You know. But I do have it set up, and then I'll. That way, you could just put all your stuff there, and then you know, people could just see it. So. Uh, let's take a look at, before we move to inflation, let's see what people, the people are saying. AT says Orlando. Uh, Microsoft to go up has, I don't even know what Microsoft is at, honestly. I, I would need to take a look at Microsoft. And like I said, good, great work. It's Thank flat, you, Angie. Red, it's flat? Yeah. Okay. Uh, AT says, hello, everyone. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, like and sub, sub, like and sub. Guys, 29 of you guys watching right now. If you could do me that favor, Hit that like, tell Rumble that they made a good investment in giving us the partnership. That would be absolutely great, right? And again, we're not asking you guys to subscribe. Subscribing on Rumble does take money. It's essentially like the membership on YouTube. We just asked for a follow. We're at 394. Can we get six more? I'm fairly certain that out of 29 of you here, uh, there's at least six people that have not followed. Guys, we just need six more and reach 400 followers on Rumble. That's so crazy. So here's to the road to 400. And hopefully to 500 by next week. I don't know if we'll be able to do it, but that'd be great as well. Um, let's see. Unemployment to 5 to 8% by December. 
Well, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that in just one second. Because there's other implications with that that I kind of want to say, which we have talked about before. Uh, lots of tech company layoffs. Um, lots of tech companies laying off monthly now. I agree with that. And then Cuban Girl says, "Hi guys, sorry, sorry, I'm late. Nah, no problem. Thank you for stopping by." And it <laughs> goes posting his, his calls. And then Microsoft. AC says Microsoft hitting its head at 420, then dropping uh, around 403. Mike, you can take a look more about that when you get like with their charts. But yeah, let's take a look at what in the world CPI is coming at. When is CPI, by the way, on twelve on the twelfth? Tuesday of the next week. Tuesday. So right here. Why am I not finding it? Because you're on the current week. You need to go to the next week. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. All right. So. So let us let let him get his five minutes of gloating at that number right there. Hang on a minute. I want to see this. I want to see this because I don't quite remember. Uh, let's see. Coming down, coming down, and staying the same. Ah, it feels good to be right. Well, it's only two data points. Well, it's only it's, it, no, it, no, no, it, no, no, no. December, you three point one in December, three point yeah. one in February, and now expected three point one yeah, in March. Yeah, yeah, but 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 yeah, but it went from three point one to three point four. That's a, oh wait, no, that is going up. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but then, it, but then it came from three point four down to three point one again. Uh, no, yeah, no, I'm right. <laughs> I'm I'm right. I'm right. I'm telling you, man, because it's it's, it's basic math, especially if you come from an engineering background, Mike. It's no, very just very look at oil. Just well, look not at even oil. looking at oil. <laughs> not even looking at oil. Just 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 basic basic uh basic understanding of physics. If you have X amount coming in, and you have X amount coming out, are you draining the system? No, you're not. No, it's impossible. If you have X plus one coming in. And X coming out, are you draining the system? No, it's going to overflow. If you have X coming in and X plus one coming out, are you draining the system? Yes. So basically, in order to drain, in order to, to bring down inflation, right? Inflation in this case is the system, you have to raise interest rates. And so you raise interest rates enough to uh, for for the incoming inflation to match the outflow of inflation. You're at equilibrium. This is not going to move unless you increase the amount of, uh, sorry, you, you, yeah, you increase the amount of stuff coming out, which means you have to raise rates. I've gotten into, I got, I got into such an argument today at work with people who are, I love them to death. Don't get me wrong. They're great people, but um, financially illiterate financially uh, most people are financially illiterate they don't understand the concept of you need to raise interest rates to bring pr uh, housing down because in their heads they're like but interest rates are the ones that are bringing prices up i'm like no it's not the principle you want the principle to fall interest rates don't matter i would rather pay well, it's also ten percent. I would rather pay ten percent on a on a hundred dollars than pay ten percent on a thousand dollars it's more money. It's the same percentage, yeah. but it's more money. Same principles apply when it comes to interest rates. You want the principal to come down because the overall interest rate that you have to pay is less. Yep. And, and really also, um, we got Dr. V saying hello. Hello, doctor. And then uh, HC saying CP Lai. Thank you very much for that. Uh, then go saying watch it. They might be watching. <laughs> watch it. They might be. <laughs> no, they're, well, not. Here, they're not. They're not. They're not. I can guarantee here. you, they're not. Well, here, here's the thing about inflation, right? What's going to drive the report lower? Oil? The, no. No. Shelter? No. Transportation? No. Well, especially with cars? shelter. No. Especially with shelter. Biden saying that nonsense yesterday? Absolutely not. No. Every every builder is rubbing their hands together, but looking at their profit metrics about to go up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I, I told to them that, bro. I told everybody I worked that today, and they were and they and their jaw hit the floor. Of their course. jaw went to China because it just it just <laughs> seriously it, it did. They're like, how in the what? I'm like, it's student loans 2.0 no, over again. No, no, I disagree. It's not student loans. It's the EV tax credit because no, it's more I, accurate of what's going to happen. Yeah, no, I, I listen. Nobody knows about that. I would rather say student loans because people know exactly what that ended up being like. People ask and for people ask for student no, loan subsidies. Checks. What was that? It's stimulus checks. No, the most accurate description. It's a stimulus check. Yeah, the pretty much. The consequences of what everyone knows. Everyone knows the consequences of that one. Yeah, but stimulus checks wasn't dealing with an industry as opposed to student loans was. That's my okay, point. Fair you know what I mean? Fair enough. 
Because with the student loan really, stuff, it was it was people being like, "We want help. To, we want to go to college, but we can't afford it." So the government said, "All right, we'll guarantee you twenty thousand dollars." And then colleges were like, "You're guaranteeing it? All right, tuition goes up by twenty thousand dollars. That's it. Oh, <laughs> that, that's okay. literally you're, it." You're talking about that part, gotcha. Yeah, okay. I'm talking about that part. And the same thing will happen to houses if he guarantees. If he guarantees, uh, <laughs> I love the way he says it. Uh, a down payment assistance of twenty five thousand dollars. All that's going to do is raise prices by twenty five grand. <laughs> Or the, or the same margin, right? That's all that that's going to do. Uh, Junji. Junji. Mike, we went to college with Junji. Really? Yes. Yes. He did, I think, computer science, Junji. Yeah. Uh, more stimulus checks equals more money equals better. <laughs> Not really. Not really, Junji. But I see what you mean, though. Um, but yeah, man, this uh, I I we'll see what happens when it comes to inflation. Now, what are they projecting inflation to come in? Because I kind of just so they're expecting it to stay the same. Or no, they're expecting for it to see- the volatile one that again, uh, uh, co- uh, computer science, yeah, and then uh, Doctor V says hi HC. Um, but here's the thing, right? It's staying stagnant as right. oil is going up. So I'm like, maybe they don't. Maybe we don't finally see the positive energy bar this month, but I'm pretty sure next month we're going to get it. And then core, it's like core still has shelter in it. So you're still boiling the frog on core. Like let me, let if me... you look at it, like the Fed's going to look at it and be like, this is not progress. So let me take a look at what it was before. So this is guys, the last CPI report. Um, as you can see right over here, this was for January, right? We're going to get what the February think, one. Uh, energy is going to come in at? Right. So this is what I was looking at. So energy before or last month came in at 4.6. We might, I don't know. Because negative we're, one? I think no, negative No, no. I think because we didn't see the rise in oil up until the latter end, right? Or the beginning of March, basically, or the latter end of February. So I would argue four, maybe. All right, so 4%. you're saying four, I'm saying negative one. Let's see what, uh, what does the ch- uh, chat say? Yeah, guys, chat, what do, you guys, what do you guys think uh, tomorrow's, uh, in, not tomorrow, sorry, Tuesday's inflation, specifically for energy, is going to come in at? Do you guys think it'll be uh, a negative? I, and again, guys, I fully understand that this is a lie. I fully understand that. But guess who's follow? guess who follows this? Mike, that was your The cue. returns in the Fed? Well, I ha- you had to use the R word. <laughs> All right. YouTube dumb, doesn't dumb like it. YouTube doesn't All like right. the R word. Regardless. In the Fed. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Them and also the markets in general. Right? The markets look yeah. at this. Even though this is a lie, there is we have to take a look at it. Unfortunate. It's unfortunate, but we just have to, to take a look at it. So yeah. Uh, again, guys, tell us what you guys think energy specifically will be. Uh, I don't know, gas prices didn't go up much. So that for you, Junji, let me tell you, man, I, you're still in New Jersey here in Pennsylvania. The gas prices went went up from three dollars and thirty seven to three dollars and sixty five. So yeah, it did went up a lot here. Well, can you pull up the AAA gas prices? We should That's pull been up the usually AAA. a pretty good indicator of it's what it's been. Great indi- indicator, actually. So let's take a look at that one as well. Let's take a look at this. Look, Pennsylvania's blood red now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Why do we have to have a gas tax? Why do we have to have a South Carolina just sitting in its little little area of like light blue? Well, why can't I? Dark blue. This is why I want to move to Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, scroll down. And why scroll Wyoming, down as Mike? You, as your tears, Mike, uh, Mike, the best state. Really? Is that cheap in Wyoming? Yeah, Wyoming's great. Yeah, hold on, got 30 inches of snow, so let me go back there. Let, let me go book a flight and go back there. T- take me with you, please. All right, you, you can get in the, we'll put you in the a baggage. We'll be. We'll claim you as heavy baggage. I want to buy a cowboy hat, an authentic cowboy hat. All right, let's yeah, take a look at it. I know they are. It's a cowboy yeah. safe for a reason, my dude. I know. So the current, let's see, this is the average. So the current average price is $3.40. So Pennsylvania is above that. Yeah, uh, a week ago, it was $3.33. Look at that. Seven cents in a week. Seven cents yeah, in a week. Look at a month ago. Month ago, average, month ago average 351. 15, three, no, 315. Yeah, 315 versus 344 40. now. Yeah. That's a, a, that's a big jump. That's a massive so, jump. Yeah, okay, so what's the percentage difference? Uh, well, it's only down, it's only going to be down 1%, basically. 
if you if, if you take the year ago value and then the current a average what would that be can you pull up the report itemized so it's down Where? eight percent or no it's higher yeah it's down it's down eight percent so is the no, no where's the, the where's the report, report where's the report itemized that's that's why the cpi report ah okay I want or to see here. what, um, yeah, I want to see what the fuel um, percentage was month, month, the year to year. You want me to take a look at this? Yes. Show table? Yep. Okay. And then keep going down to energy, uh, gasoline. Okay, so could energy could come in lower. Energy could come in negative eight. Because remember, the main thing that's bringing down energy, yes, it is uh, gasoline of all types, but it's mainly fuel oil. Look at that, 14.2. And natural gas at almost 18. So looking at that, I think maybe we actually get a lower number. Probably. I think that CPI report could be a positive surprise. Yeah, a positive surprise or in line, right? Because you also have to take into account everything else. And oh, when I say positive, I mean lower. I think they could come in like a 3.6, a 3.0 on regular. I think it'll move it a little bit. But then again, there's other categories that could surprise us. That, so... that is, that's what I'm saying. So you're, you're basically thinking that this will come in at 3.0. Yes, and right. then three six four core. Right, right, right. But, but but that's exactly what I mean is that we're probably going to get we're still going to be stuck at around the three point one, because other categories may actually push CPI slightly up. We're gonna I think we're gonna stay flat for months, honestly, months, and then slowly which would break the up. narrative. Which it would. would break the narrative of the Fed cutting rates, where if inflation becomes entrenched right then you get into the whole entrenched narrative which is a pretty scary narrative to be because it puts the the rate hike back on the table yes and no remember what jerome powell said uh yeah just keep it higher for longer Dam no. damage more stuff as nope. we um nope not we that haven't seen the full effect of monetary policy nope not that that's not what i'm that's not what i'm referring to if what you, you take if you take a look at if you take a look at the first the first day of testimony he said uh, we will consider lowering rates as inflation head, if inflation heads towards two percent. Remember, he changed that narrative. We covered it here. Yeah, but he was also asked in the last FOMC, what does he mean by like, are you gonna cut rates when you get to two percent? Are you going to right? And that's what I'm saying. Rates. He changed the narrative. That, that's exactly what I mean. He changed the narrative. Because before, it was when we get to 2%. Now he's saying it may not be at 2%. As long as we continue the same trajectory, as long as inflation keeps coming down and the economy continues to stay the same way, we they could cut rates. And with these quote-unquote job numbers beats, right? Yeah, it's heading in that same direction. You know? Yes, we got higher unemployment, but at the same time, it's like, it's like, they were also expecting that. They also want that too, remember? Yeah. So it all depends as to whether or not the their unemployment metrics, uh, if the current unemployment metrics is below or above what they were expecting. Because if it's below... Yeah, they also threw the dot plot out, so it doesn't matter. That's the snapshot view in time. Right. Yeah, no, I I agree. It's We have no idea. I I don't know anymore. When, when, when it comes to them... Whatever they say, I'm just like, okay, this will change next month. <laughs> this will change yeah, the next change time you speak. The next hour when he opens his mouth. Yeah, this will be. Yeah, this will change the next time you speak. But this will. This is an interesting one, guys. Tell us what you guys think. CPI will come in on Tuesday. I'll probably put a poll. I wish you could do that on, on Rumble, like on the live chat. You could do it on, on YouTube. Hopefully, Rumble one day adds it. But, but yeah. Um, well, tell us what you guys think. Right? What would CPI come in? Uh, the normal people really don't watch the core CPI too much. People really care about mainly the normal CPI, you know, the, the headline inflation, you know, um, tell us what you guys think is going to be. And of course, tell us what you guys think oil, well, energy specifically energy will, um, will come in. Do you think it's going to be a uh, higher than four, uh, negative 4.6? So, you know, getting closer to zero and what number or lower than negative 4.6 getting farther away from zero. So that'd be interesting. That'd be interesting. So, yeah. All right, so that's the economic news when it comes to what happened today. However, there's something that I wanted to talk about regarding yesterday because we did not cover Powell talking yesterday, but I found this little nugget, piece of nugget. I, uh, I believe it was last night as I was editing, as, as I was like doing stuff. 
editing the live stream for YouTube. Mike, are you ready for what you're about to see? Sure. Are you sure? No. Okay, well, I want you to read it. Ready? All right. Three, two, one. Fed Powell, I expect there to be bank failures from CR commercial real estate, but not big banks. There are more small and medium sized banks with big, uh, biggest exposure. He's literally just said the quiet, the quiet part silent part out loud. No, 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 no. He grabbed a megaphone. <laughs> he grabbed a megaphone and said the quiet and blasted the quiet part out loud. Huh. Monday. Huh. Monday. Monday. Okay. You know, no, nothing ever bad happened when the yield was this inverted. But you how know, did we what, not? What do I know? How did we not catch this? This was on the seventh. This was yesterday. We did not cast this at all. Well, to be fair, we didn't really go in depth when it came to this. But unlike the first day, because I figured I wasn't going to say he was just going to reiterate what he said on the first day. Apparently not. <laughs> so not only did we see that guy, that bald guy on, um, on, on what you call it? What was uh, uh, CNBC, like where, where I played that video where he said there is over, there is about a trillion it. dollars. Hang on. There's over a trillion dollars in commercial real estate loans that right now in 2024, uh, no, sorry, that are, that are currently vacant. However, it'll go up to four point, I think it was $4.7 trillion that is going to get refinanced this year and refinanced higher at the current rates. I love the, um, not Larry sink. Uh, the bank term funding program is going to be extended. If not, the Fed will have an emergency rate cut and QE on their hands. I'm telling you, man. The I openly, you, you, you people don't know how to listen. The damn you know what Fed came out. Take the freaking con out of your ears. The program is ending unequivocally. My dude, they say that at the end of the day, guess what? Guess what? Well, they're screwed either way. Look, all I'm saying is gold up uh, the US, the US, um, the US was supposed to temporarily, temporarily uh, cut the tie between the US dollar and gold. Temporarily. That was Richard Dixon, I believe, in 1978. Temporarily. Yeah. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting on the on the temporary part because <laughs> it's become permanent. Technically, the yeah, law, but... technically, by the way, that law, technically, that law still says temporary. But suspension why, yeah go on so kind of like why people um are financially illiterate when they talk about the bank term funding program mm -hmm. the government can't do it because there's no liquidity in the bond market i agree with you that statement my dude but they could you, ha you have to fund you, you the problem with the bank term funding program it has drained since its creation has drained almost all liquidity out of the bond market the fed knows that the, the there's they have two choices they can, and I don't even know if QE at this point would solve this. If you fund the liabilities of the banks while trying to hold inflation down, and then uh, Junji says you can always add a tax, remove it, uh, removing it though. Oh yeah, as always. But the problem is, here's a threat the Fed has never faced till recently. Failed auctions. Failed bond auctions have not been murmured in the market since ever. And now they're everyone's talking about that. They're talking about the basis trade. They're talking about the spreads that auctions are closing at. Things that have never happened in history are happening now. And the Fed is looking at it being like, huh, are we going to get enough bids to fund the liabilities? Now, they have other things that they can do as like short term. But once you expose that the the loans are failing, the bonds, the bond auctions are failing, where no participant wants to take them, and they're shrinking every time they have them, then it's like, okay, well, we got a problem on our hands. And when that happens, no one is going to want to touch any form of debt with a thousand foot pole. Q huge bank failures. <laughs> well, do you know what the number one bank? that has the largest exposure to commercial real estate at 57% of their portfolio. The regional bank or the big bank? Nope. Number seven bank in the world. What? United States Bank Corp. 
has one of the biggest commercial real estate exposures out of all the big banks. Yikes. But you know what's funny about all of that? There's a very simple solution. Let them fail? Let them fail. <laughs> Literally just let them fail. Let let nature, in this case, the economic nature, um, take control. That's it. Let everything, let the system purge the rot out by itself. It sucks. I really hate to say that, guys. It sucks because that would result in a lot of pain. A lot of pain. But just like, well, actually, there are, there have been several theory. But I'm gonna say theories. There have been several, I guess, articles written by by you know economists saying, uh, lo- looking back into the 1929 and 1930 depression, saying that if the government never got involved, it would have been it would have been like nothing. It would have been like nothing ever happened. It would have lasted yeah, shorter. We, what? HC says government passed funding bill just now. Just now? The Senate, the Senate kicked the can down the road some more. Oh, okay. So the House passed it which, a few days ago and now the Senate. Because you know what that means? The government gets to spend money at the rate it was spending, draining more liquidity from the bond market so we can speed this whole thing up. Let's actually take a look at that real quick. I, I want to take a look at reverse repo for a second. So, because by the way, reverse wow. repo is essentially the, the, the liquidity for the bond market. And I know, I know, it hasn't moved, but we are still at around, you know, $444.8 billion. What's that? The trend is down. But the trend is down, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. Mike, for everybody that's new here that may not know what reverse repo is, would you like to explain? Just in case. All right, so you know. basically when it's reverse repo is where banks park cash and uh, to get collateral. Collateral is treasuries. They have to hold treasuries in order to take money from you. So, which is what, which is what, uh, one of the things that uh, was stated or was asked about Powell with the with the Basel three thing because they want to increase that requirement for collateral. Go on. Yeah, they essentially doubled it for the big banks. So oh the big goodness. banks, after holding all this horrible collateral, are being told, "Hell, go buy more," and they're they're looking at them being like, "Uh huh." Well, they're holding like the thirty year one, but yeah, go on. Yeah, that's 40% underwater, and they're telling them to double their holdings. And they, they're like, you sure you're not going to raise rates? And he's like, yeah, trust me. I'm from the government. <laughs> yeah, well, he, well so, technically, the Federal the Reserve. are like, no. Well, technically, Just, the Fed's, no. the, the, well, technically, the Federal Reserve is not federal, is not a, it's not a bank, and it's not a reserve, so. Yeah, but they still look at him like, uh, no. Right. <laughs> but. Anyway, so basically, this is what we use to fund liquidity in the bond market. Now, the money that park here is paid a certain percentage interest rate, which is usually slightly below the federal funds rate. But if yields are higher than that said rate, it's more incentivary for those that money to flow out of this facility and go into the open market. That's how you fund liquidity. This has been draining down from two trillion dollars to close to half a billion now, and. We're slowly going down once this reaches zero, which estimated by June at the rate it's going down or around there, you will start to have panic in the bond market because no one will want to buy anything and the Fed will not be able to force people to buy anything. So, you know, right in time for the election, right in time for an election. And actually, that sets up perfectly what um, in regards to what HC said uh, a few comments ago. In fact, let me go to that right now. Uh, let's see. What did it, I remember? What AC said. Let's see. Let's see. Um, Arm passes bill just now. No. No. Was it HC that said that? I don't really remember. Maybe it was Ghost instead. I like how um, Biden says he's going to raise taxes. I'm glad. Um, gl- glad. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what he mentioned there uh, because he don't control Congress. I'm glad HGE huge i'm glad sure. i'm glad huge i'm glad I'm, I'm, i don't know what, what you said there ghost uh because he don't control congress but re- yeah sure. yeah but the thing is is that congress unfortunately tends to cave because That's even though problem well that and even though republicans are republicans are supposed to be we're supposed to be against biden they fall in line every single time you know it's 
it is what it is. So I just, I just pray regarding the whole twenty-five thousand dollar in uh, in down payment assistance. I hope, I hope, I pray that that one does not pass for the love of God, or or it just stays in the period, like in like the holding period up until hopefully November. But there, what was who said the comment? I can't find it now. Goodness. Um. Let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to find the... Okay, right here. Unemployment to 5 to 8% by December. So, Mike, what you just said there is um, regarding just in time for an election. Guys, things are setting up perfectly. The dominoes are being set up perfectly that if Donald Trump wins the election... Again, I know a lot of you are he, by the way. That's he. Uh, because he don't... Uh, because he doesn't control Congress. Um, I guess a lot of you guys are very, I guess, black pill regarding um trump winning the election but look right now the way that it's looking like if margins remain the same he wins it and i think that they're getting prepared for it if he wins it and we get and they crash the markets that is the greatest thing that could happen seriously i am dead serious. if they crash the economy guys that would be the greatest thing to occur right we're over here complaining things are too expensive Right, we're over here. Stocks are way through the roof. HC telling me short Nvidia, right? Because things are just way too overpriced. We're seeing just just complete rot in the system. We're seeing all these things fester. If the solution, if if they decide to to crash everything, if Trump wins and then blame him for it, that is the greatest thing that could happen. I am not joking. I've said this several several times. People have the misconception that stocks go up. That's a good thing. No, stocks go up. That is not a good thing, right? Because you want the stock market to go up with the economy. And right now, the economy is not going up at the same rate as the stock market. The economy is imploded. The economy it's is gone. imploded. So yep. if, if we get if we get a nice pullback, right? If we get a nice, and I mean pullback, I'm talking like 50, 60% haircut, right? All that that's doing is clearing out the rot, setting everything back to, I, I guess, I'm, I'm going to say zero, but like a normalized level where things are actually affordable again. People, like right now, you said at work, right? You, you said at work, uh, Mike, that people are saying that um, interest, uh, not interest rates, that inflation is coming down. Is that what you said earlier? No. What did I say? That um, trying to find people is difficult right now. No, no, no. But but, but you said something regarding, um, but you said something regarding that inflation is coming down. Or no, Bi Biden said yesterday that inflation is coming down. Yeah. There you go. And I'm and just then, like, uh, yeah, what's Ghost up? says uh, they will do a cut in July to help Biden out. And I don't know. I, I think depending on the reports, right? So we have right. to see what they do because they've just been kicking the can down the road. Again, the Fed, would, I think it's so burned by the transitory narrative that they that? won't cut in time to actually... If, if, if they had a actual path to a soft landing... I think they would miss it, and I don't believe they do have one, right? Like that's you guys know my opinion on that. I think that they'll miss it because they are so fearful of the transitory narrative coming back again that they'll hold you, the economy underwater long enough to where it essentially breaks, and then they'll emergency cut, emergency cut, and because everything's falling apart. Could I don't. No time in history do you get the soft landing because even. If you get like the Trump wins election scenario, it's still not a soft landing. It's still going to be fall off a cliff. So let and, me and yeah, finish up. And the thing is, like, you think trade war is going to be any different than they were before? Right. <laughs> Especially with a very volatile market. And again, we have never found a bottom in the market without VIX spiking above 40. We didn't get that. We didn't get volume capitulation. So... This entire run will be reversed. So let me add on to that, Ghost, as well. Um, what would happen? I'll give them. I'll, let's give them that. They cut rates in July to help Biden out. Come September, uh oh, inflation's ticking back up. They are now forced to cut in October. Sorry, not not cut. They're, they're then forced to raise in October, right before the election. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, again, they're so battered by that narrative, the transitory narrative that they're t like, they're finding in the FOMC statements, right? What they're putting in writing, not what Powell's talking. They're finding ways to kick the can down the road because they know 
you have never printed 40% of the currency. And in nine even months. in Volcker's times, in nine months, you by the saw way. how long it took to get inflation under control with a standard stupidity of the government. Yep. What 40% in uh, currency in printing in one year is never, never happened. So if, if you can assume Volcker is the base case, Volcker took years to fix. Yep. You think this is going to be any different? I would actually argue it's worse. I would actually, actually I think it would be a decade well. before you get it back to where you were. But here's the thing. Unless, they could just... What? Um, there's only one way out. What? Make more stuff. Yeah. That, that's the incentive right there. But you know what happens when you... When, you, you know what you need to make more stuff? Jobs. Jobs. Money. Money. No, no. Not, not necessarily more money. But just jobs. Meaning unemployment can, has can to do what? Confidence? Well, that. But, but meaning unemployment has to do what? Go down. Go down. And they don't want that. <laughs> so yeah. their their perspective this is why I despise Keynesian economics. I really, really do. And and the fact that we follow it I just I have to I have to mention it. I have to follow it because all the because the important players are following it. If it was up to me, I'd be like Wash my hands of this. I am going to go with my Austrian economics. Let's make an island and let's do full blown Austrian economics. Be done with it. End of story. But the idea that you could just print as much money as you want because inflation only happens due to the transact due to the velocity of transactions in that economy. It's just like you people are idiots. And you, you know what's people even are funnier. idiots. Like, like, well, you're right on about the idiot. Them keep funding the government at the rates of the Pelosi era. Yeah. You're making the bond situation worse. worse. Yeah. So you are essentially doing the one thing that even if you have this master plan, you can't control humans' nature for risk adversity. And the bond market is not, no one controls the bond market. Like, that's countries, right? But you can, no hedge fund has sway over it. It's government is basically pure essentially capitalism through the consequences with slight manipulation in there but you know no one controls it like you can manipulate the markets if you wanted to the bond market's too big and, you and, will face and it takes offer. more and it takes more to actually move it um but yeah i just i lost my train of thought <laughs> no, uh, and then uh, uh, junji says printing more money equals higher wages no no does not equal Oh, it does not equal higher wages. Well, no, it just well, well depending yeah, if you're in California, a, because yesterday I showed a video where somebody literally says that her solution to uh, to to dollar minimum wage. Yeah, to to that was New York. That no, was it wasn't. It was California. It was California. I, oh. I said New York, thinking it was New York, but then it, it was guys with California, um, which nah, is makes tomato sense. tomato re, re, in, in reality. Um, you know, but yeah, yesterday we saw a video uh, saying. A woman running for state senate saying, "We need to make." I don't know why I'm sounding like Bernie Sanders. We need to make uh, a living a living wage again. Make minimum wage fifty dollars. I'm just like, what happened to fifteen, huh? <laughs> but you know what's funny? The like now you guys bring up the dollar. The dollar's value has stayed. The DXY exactly, Junji. Hang on, man. Hang on, man. Hang on, hang on. Exactly, Junji. Fifty dollar <laughs> minimum wage, hundred dollar hamburgers. Exactly, exactly. Hundred. Yep. No, 150, no, 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 no,
and they're not doing it. And, and that's my point. I'll just go ahead and buy my own cow. Dude, absolutely. At that point, man, I am I am all for it. By the way, if you got to go. Farm. Yeah, I am all for that, man. I am all for it. Mike, do you, do you got to go? Not not go, uh, go, yeah, but like right. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I'll be right back. To step out, yeah. Uh, yeah, ghost, absolutely, absolutely, my dude. I am all for. I mean, I want to move to Tennessee to to have a have a farm, uh, have some um, have some chickens, you know, have some ducks, maybe a couple goats here and there, you know, just watch chickens do their chicken things. That that that's my ideal life. I don't care about luxury vacations. I don't care about any about that. And also, I gotta have one thing though it, on that farm. I need to have a tank. Yes, I want to have a 20-ton war machine. Absolutely. I will absolutely have a tank because I absolutely love those things. Um, Junji, uh, that means no inflation. But, but, right, exactly. That means, yeah, basically the dollar falling. Uh, it, but, the, J- J- Junji, the dollar falling 2.68% on the one year is essentially deflation, right? It's essentially deflation because the currency is being devalued. Oh, actually, sorry. The, do- the dollar falling 2.68% means essentially you're right no inflation because 2.68 is absolutely nothing right so it's i don't it's just the keynesian economic model they taught us that junji in high school they, they taught us that and i you know i didn't even care about it back then i would love to go back like in a time machine go back to 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 that classroom in high school and just be like, and just be like, you people are idiots. The feds are a bunch of criminals. This is what this means. This is what that means. Uh, Keynesian economics is a failure. Always will be a failure. And just go crazy. But then again, it's the educational system. It's an absolute failure to, to, to begin with. Uh, let me see. That's what I'm going to buy. Some land about 10 acres. Dude, I would love to buy. I, I don't even need 10 acres. I just need like three. Three to four. That's good enough for me, my dude. You know. That's enough for, that's enough. But the one thing I really want to have is a tank. I always want, I like, that's my, a tank and a 50 BMG. That's like my go-to things I got to have. So, yeah. 50 BMG, M82 sniper rifle. <laughs> you know, sniper rifle and a and a 20-ton war machine. Why is gold going up? Well, HC, thank you so much for that great, great segue. Because gold extends rally to, re- to record high with investors eyeing 2500 by year end hc i don't even know if you meant that on purpose but i actually had an article pulled up already <laughs> regarding gold so thank you for that gold prices continued their run up to, re- to record highs nearing 2200 per ounce uh, sp- I-, I thought that said sparkled sparked by expectation of lower u.s interest rates there you go my dude sparked by expectations of lower u.s interest rates and persistent demand from chinese help ha- and persistent demand from Chinese household and gold bucks may have the reason. To, whoa. So China right now, it says households, but how much of the, do they mean households? Is it like individuals or do they mean households? Is it like the, C, the communist Chinese party over there, the CCP? So, but yeah, it's mainly, it's, I would actually argue it's mainly sparked by the lower U.S. interest rates or the expectation of the lower U.S. interest rates. Shout out, by the way, to the 28 of you guys watching right now. Absolutely amazing, guys. Thank you so much. Again, Rumble has been amazing. There's just nothing else to say there. Well, we will continue to live stream even after the partnership is done. We'll do live stream, but we're going to mainly focus on Rumble when it comes to live streaming because y'all are absolutely crazy. Again, can we probably can we please get, guys, there's tw- 30 of you guys watching right now. We need four more follows. Not, not subscribers, but just followers to reach 400 uh, followers here on Rumble. So if you guys could do us that favor, that would be absolutely great. Um, it would mean a lot to us. Never thought we would actually make it any like this high when it comes to Rumble. So thank you guys so much. Really do appreciate it. And uh, shout out to the to the wonderful people, you know, Chris, pa- Chris Pavlovsky, Polish name, and uh, Rick Rack, where, uh, you know, they're... They're making, you know, all these awesome things for Rumble. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. China is switching their investments from housing to gold because they, they crashed. Oh, dude, the housing crash when it comes to... It hasn't fully crashed, but their biggest uh, their biggest real estate developer in China, they had, like, the big crash... What was that? Like, a few years ago in, like, the late teens. Uh, and then they came back for a resurgence. So, Junji, do you think that that's what they're doing? They're literally switching invest. They're, they're literally switching like um, I wouldn't say markets, but they're switching 
basically their economy from real estate because it's it's a it's been a complete failure to now following gold. <laughs> That's kind of it's kind of nuts. Uh, gold powered to an all-time high of $2,185 on Friday after the U.S. reported a much higher than expected 275,000 jobs created in February, but an uptick uh, in the unemployment rate and a moderation in wage gains, reinforcing hopes that inflation has cooled enough to allow the Fed to start cutting rates, which is the reason why, as the article said in the first paragraph, that gold is uh, going is rising and it's looking upwards of $2,500 by the year, by the end of the year. Dollar index as lower, making gold cheaper for overseas buyers, while the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield fell 9 basis points on the week to 4.09%, its lowest in five weeks. I wonder what the, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm kind of curious. What is the, let me look that up. What's the three-month? What's the three-month yield on the, on treasuries right now? 5.4. 5.4. 5.4. Yeah, 5.4. It fell around 0.19%. Look, dude, I, I, I don't really like. care. I don't really care as long as as long as the um, as long as I get my money back uh, for my for my three month treasury bill that I have w- worth thirteen thousand dollars. As long as I get that back with the interest, I'm perfectly fine. I don't really care because after that, I'm 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 gonna use that money for what I need to, and then that's it. You know. So let's see. Uh, if they're building empty houses that are complete garbo, I would definitely, I would definitely build my next house with gold instead. Absolutely. Well, gold is Jundi. Gold is very, very um, malleable. So I, I wouldn't even know about making. Uh, come on, man. We've all played Minecraft. You, you know that that butter sword breaks easily. Come on. Um, I started buying gold. HC question. Did you start buying gold as in like the physical gold, or are you buying gold derivatives and ETFs? Because me personally, was that? They're not the same. Yeah, you go talk about that, Mike. Uh, do you want me to pull you up just to, j- j- just so that way you have? Because well, I, I need to no, go to the bathroom. Because, uh, well, yeah, you can pull me up and we can talk about gold. Yeah, yeah. I just I, <laughs> and then Junji said at least it won't rust. At least it won't rust unless it's fool's gold. You know that could also be yeah. a possibility. Yeah. So let me pull you up while I uh, use the bathroom really quickly, and yep. you can continue talking about gold and um, talking to chat. So. Yep. But looking at uh, the yield, I love how they were like, oh, the lowest has been in five weeks. And I look at this, I'm like, okay, well, either bear flag or W pattern. So there's your W kind of forming, like wonky, or really it's more of a bear flag pattern, which would be bullish for the market. But I'm just like, I can just see the 10 year just go sideways for an extended period of time, just sideways up even, uh, possibly bust up, you know, depending on the CPI report that comes out. But um, we were talking about gold. Let's jump over to gold real quick here. Ma- a massive run on gold right now. So pretty interesting, especially which indicates further inflation in the future. Um, that's what, you know, that's what the gold price is telling everyone, right? That the value of stuff is going to go down. And then uh, HC saying you're buying physical. That's good. So that means that you're not going to be on the paper trade side where if as physical goes up, spot price goes up, uh, paper trade usually um, actually devalues when gold goes up. So it's pretty interesting around that with um, how ETFs and all that work. But uh, let's see. I need to uh, cover that one. Uh, China switch. Uh, China is switching their investments from housing to gold because they crashed. Yeah, but the problem is no one wants to give China, buy, take Chinese currency for gold because it's so manipulated. So they're still, they're still going to have to pay a, the premium on it. They're not going to be able to just like, you know, what housing say, this house is worth a billion dollars and uh, just magically make a billion dollars appear. And then trying to value, eventually get 10% of my investments into gold. I've never been a big proponent of physical and stuff like that, right? So that's, I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying that's just not my cup of tea. And I would basically just, I find things other things more interesting to myself but again everyone is their own invest in what you think is going to bring you value and return in the long run gold historically does but also gold can be pain in the ass sometimes too if you have to wait a decade or two for it to kind of fix itself like you know i talk about the eternal cup and handle on gold which is just it, it it's funny how how massive it is so this is your cup there's your handle like you know going up 
and I'm just like, you essentially waited from 2011 to 2021 to complete the pattern, or actually 2023. So I'm like, do I want to wait 13 years when I can do other stuff with it? That's just my, you know, my 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 thought of it. But again, it's a great store of value. It um, protects you against inflation, and to me, gold versus the um, bonds. I I don't know if I would maybe do bonds now. It, it again, the bond argument in those last 13 years wasn't really lucrative, but now it is. So what? again, so I'm talking about we're talking about like when gold's cup and handle, it took so long to come to fruition. So if you bought in 2011, mm -hmm. you basically had to wait 13 years to get your money back. Mm -hmm. And I was like, for me, it's like during that time, bonds were crap. So it's like you, there was an argument for gold, but now you start talking about if gold doesn't keep running, is there more of an argument for bonds? Well, I would actually argue bonds right now at the current, especially the short-term bonds at the current yield are very, very lucrative. Yeah. Yeah. You could just keep rolling those. You could just keep rolling that three and a half. Sorry, not three and a half. That, that three month bond and you get, you know, and you, and you get a 5.4% yield in a year. That's insane. Right. That's more than, that's more than the guaranteed. Guaranteed, guaranteed, guaranteed with little, the only, the only way that it's not guaranteed is if the U S government defaults. And at that point we have Armageddon. <laughs> so, you know, at, at that point, it'll it, losing a couple tens of thousands of dollars doesn't mean much. So, yeah. and also remember, uh, the reason it's guaranteed is because the country is the only one that has the monopoly on violence. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So. It'll be uh, very, very interesting. Can, do, do you want me to take you out? Yes, please. Okay. So, yeah, guys, that is uh, pretty much all the news that we wanted to cover today. Uh, it's a lot of news, right? It's a whole lot of news. And shout out to the 32 of you guys watching. We've actually had a really good stream today. I'm pretty 32, sure. 35. I'm looking at 32 right now. Oh, now we just jumped to 35. Um, shout out to the 35 of you guys watching right now. Really do appreciate it, guys. Like, follow, and of course, share the stream. The like one is by far, the, the well, they're all important. But guys, if you like, it's free. It really tells Rumble that they did a good job in, invest, in investing in us uh, for the partnership program. So it really helps, guys. It really does help. And again, we're trying to get to 400 subs. We are six away. Uh, if there's six of you guys that have not followed... And you like what we do, you know, we, we pretty much just don't, we don't, we, we don't, we're not pushing crypto. We're not pushing a stock. In fact, sometimes Mike, you say something that I completely disagree with and then we argue over it. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, there is dissent here. So it's, it's just a, a conversation, right? We're here to, to bring you guys entertainment as well as some kind a of guidance. Discussion. Yeah. A health, a, and a healthy discord. Some kind of guidance as to what in the world to do, right? Because, you know, I'm constantly right now. I'm I'm really I'm hoping Trump gets in just for the market to fall, right? And you you're probably want to see the system burn. I well, not even the system burn. I just, I just want the system to get back to normal. I want the rot to stop. And people are like, "Why would you want that?" But I'm like, guys, you want you want a recession? Yes. I you, want Warren Buffett buying stuff so I can calmly buy the market. You want a recession? A lot of people are like, "Why would you want a recession?" A recession's healthy. Recessions are healthy. It, it, it cheapens stuff up. It makes you buy things at great valuation. It, it get, gets rid of all the zombie companies. It gets rid of all the crap in the system to an extent, not fully, but it does get rid of a lot and it does help a lot. Yes, do people end up suffering? Yes. But at the end of the day, you will make it out of it. And especially... How, yeah, what's up? I love how it goes. I'm the one that pushes the stock. Well, yeah, you are the one that pushes the stock. Mainly ARM. But at the end of the day... If a recession happens, you will make it out alive. And if you guys are watching videos like ours or, or, or other people that say similar things, most likely you are ready. So, you know, take it, you know, take it. <laughs> there, there, it yeah, ARM, there it is. Um, <laughs> so let, so did you read AC's trying to eventually get 10% of all my investments? Yeah, we talked. Oh, that's what sparked the gold conversation. And then uh, Junji says, if they decrease the school work week to three to uh, four to 3.5 days, Everything wouldn't seem as bad. Well, to be fair, uh, school school is a prison. Um, let's let's keep it a thousand. Uh, it, what what they teach there is not what is supposed to be taught there. 
In fact, I was, uh, I always, I always talk to Angie. Uh, I don't know if she's still watching. 37 of you guys, mad lads watching right now. Um, but, um, it's funny, like not sidetracking the whole school thing. Remember the article yeah. that I sent you about the SATs going digital now? And then, yeah. um, let, let's lower the education attainment of our students. No, but who by... cares? But who cares about the SATs? Honestly, I know. I just found it funny. I just found it funny because I was like, I don't know if you guys know, but they went digital now with SATs. They lowered the amount of t questions on it, increased the time frame, and then depending on how you score on the first half, you get an easier or a harder test. So you know, talk about e uh, equal outcome versus equality. They're basically they're basically doing a progressive SAT where it's like it's progressively increasing or decreasing based on the difficult. It's 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 essentially like like when you're overpowered, it, it's like equal when you, not even that, but like but like if you're playing a video game and you have overpowered armor, the game knows you have overpowered armor, so they just make the bosses a million times harder just to equalize it. <laughs> That's essentially what that is. Um, but who cares about the SATs, honestly? And I don't know if if Angie's still watching, but. I always tell her this, you people, and by you people, you know, her, her school, she's like, I would, I'm, I'm like, I would love to go to your school, just one of your classrooms and just say, look at the teacher, look at, look at the class and say, you're supposed to, uh, you, you guys are supposed to be learning uh, basic education here. Y'all, all, you are, you are all in sophomore, junior year of high school. Yeah. Raise your hand if you know how to change a car tire. <laughs> raise your hand if you know how you to change finally, speaking of car tire you finally changed your oil and i finally i finally learned yeah I, I finally learned so you know that's but, you gotta right. you gotta always back make to, better but back to junji's comment no please my graphic card prices yeah, they will be going up because if nvidia fell off a cliff your the gar graphics card prices are still gonna go up because well frankly they're just like they're they just love making money Online SATs and pre it's not even pre curved. It's pre yeah, no, it, it, it would be pre curved. Automatically pre curved, essentially, as you're taking it. But anyway, that's, earnings time. That's freaking crazy. All right, guys. So yeah, that pretty much does it for the news. Again, it was a lot. However, we did have we actually we didn't have um, earnings. What well, we did, but it's companies that we really don't care about, honestly. But I wanted to cover guys Costco because Costco. Let's actually pull that up right now. And I'm going there tomorrow. Oh, I am. Yeah, I shop at Costco. I, I know you do. What are you buying? Uh, everything. Okay. So Costco today did not have a, well, yesterday and today, did not have a good day. In fact, uh, do I not have that? Really? I don't have that up? Okay, hang on a minute. Sorry about that. Um, there we go. Costco, as you guys can see, guys, fell today 7.64% and post-market fell half of a percent. And if we take a look at this on the five day, yeah, this is coming off of um, this is coming off of yesterday. They they had earnings, right? They fell from seven eighty five fifty nine to a low of um, actually no, okay. So yeah, this is basically just coming off of y yesterday's um, yesterday's uh, earnings report, right? So Costco's a company that a lot of people are like, it's way too overpriced. Look at this thing on the one year, 52.67%. And on the year to date, 9.92. It's actually a lot higher, but it's fallen down a little bit. This is a company, guys, this company's fundamentals are through the roof. Seriously, they are amazing. For their specific sector, this is, this is the... This is the Microsoft of their respective sector, which I believe is consumer staples, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, it's a company that a lot of people want to buy, but they've never really found a valuation for it. And we just got the 10-year uh, discounted free cash flow. I'm really curious as to what that says. In fact, I kind of already know what it says, which is why I'm saying this. Um, so, yeah, we can see that on the 52-week range, it's four, uh, 456 to 787. So yeah, it's uh, we're still at very much. Is this all time highs, by the way? Yes. Okay. Um, so this is at all time highs. Um, interesting. So yeah, we can see that we are very much close to all time highs. Let's see. AC says I want to buy Costco, but it's so expensive. Well, we'll we'll see if that changes. We'll we'll see if the calculator changes your mind after that. And Junji says I just went finally stocked up on some soda. I was drinking. What? What's wrong with you, Junji? It's supposed to be the other way around, my dude. <laughs> 
<laughs> I need to stock up. I finally stocked up on water because I was drinking soda. It's supposed to be the other way around, my guy. But, um, all right, guys. Yeah, Costco had earnings. And, well, let's take a look at this. So, Costco beats, this is from yesterday, Costco beats comparable sales estimates for holiday quarter. Costco's wholesale reported sales growth of 5.7% or $57.33 billion for its fiscal Q2. Comparable sales were up 56 overall during the quarter versus the 5.1 consensus. The big box retailer said comparable sales were 4.3 higher in the United States versus the 3.8. Consensus rose uh, 9.2 in Canada versus 5.4 consensus and were 8.6 higher for international markets versus the 6.7. Pretty much they beat on every single metric when it comes to comparable sales all across the board. E-commerce sales rose 18.4% during the quarter after backing out gas uh, after backing out gas price. Oh, that's right, they have their own gas station, don't they? Yep. Yeah. After backing out gas prices and FX swings, comparable sales were up 5.8% in the US versus the 4.1 um, consensus and were 4.8 higher overall versus the 4.7% per, uh, percent consensus. They be across the board. Now, we do have um, in chat go saying one of the reasons they went down, Costco's raising membership prices yes. by the dip. And then they are also cracking down on who can use the membership cards at GNG. Oh, really? So here's the thing. That's But remember what happened with Netflix. When Netflix started cracking down on like the sharing and all that, they it, made more money. They made more money. Because people aren't going to stop shopping at Costco, guys. People aren't. That's the one thing I realized that Costco almost has like a cult-like following. Yeah, because it's really, really good. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, yeah. if you ever have, like, here's the thing. Even if they raise prices, right, you still get your membership back in the cashback if you have, like, the card. Like, and everyone has a credit card, and they put it on credit cards. If you have, like, the Costco credit card plus the membership, essentially, and you fill up at their gas station when you go there, you get all your money back. Yeah. And more. So, I don't think people are going to stop, um... I don't think people no, are going to stop. Gonna, I, I think it's actually going to propel them higher. Because I believe that too. And the the, the, the fact Netflix, that Netflix and, effect. And the fact that Ghost just says buy the dip. Oh baby, wait until you, you see the calculator for what you're about to see. Whew. Membership fees uh, income was membership fees income 1.11 billion versus the 1.1 billion uh, consensus and 1.03 billion from a year ago. Wow, wow, a point eight. Uh, billion increase when it comes to their membership fees. Uh, net income for the quarter was 1.74 billion versus the one. Wow, dear lord! And this is a box store, guys. This is a grocery store. This is a freaking grocery store. Uh, it's just insane. How, these kinds of numbers. These kinds of numbers is what you so see from like a, a tech company. Here's a fun fact about Costco. Uh, Go on. Do you know what they have one of like the things they sell more than anyone else in the industry is it hot dogs no i don't know J junji just said hot dogs. you don't uh consume i don't consume so it had to be something like carb related ice cream maybe ice cream other direction but what does that mean other direction wine oh they're one of the largest retailers in the world of wine and a lot of people don't know that yeah you know i don't drink Yes, so that's why I said that. <laughs> and then uh, Junji says that one dollar and fifty cents hot dog licks lips. Yeah, no, it's a great store. Yeah, it, it is. A, it is a great store. It is a great store. I have a story about Costco. I don't know if I should say it, but it, it just proves again that there's no such thing as moral investing. I don't know if I should say it. I say it. Should, should I say it? I, I used to, so I actually did have a Costco membership back when I lived in the other place. I lived in Pennsylvania. And I was really happy with it. Then COVID hit. And they were forcing me to wear a mask. And I was not having it. So I went in trying to cancel my membership because I'm just like, I don't, I'm not going to shop here. Like, this is ridiculous. Why? I'm not, I'm not going to be forced to wear a mask. Screw yourselves. And um, <laughs> I ended up having to put one on just to cancel the stupid thing. I, I then got so upset that I sold my shares at Costco. This was back in 2020. And if we take a look at back this again, right? if we take a look at um, back what, what the Costco was in 2020, it was at around $356. Uh, actually, no, it was less. Sorry. It was, uh, it, was, it was around like, 
Yeah, it was around it was around 300 bucks. Yeah, it was around 300 bucks. So I sold all my share, which I only had like five that I had at around 300 bucks out of just like spite. And then they released their special dividend. And then I'm just like, Phew. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? And then I just saw that massive rise. I'm just like, ah. And then I got back in at around like the $400 mark. And yeah, <laughs> that's my story about Costco. Um, no such thing as moral investing, guys. I should have just held those shares, right? Me me selling those shares out of spite over, over that. You think that did an impact? No. And at the end of the day, I'm the one that lost. <laughs> now, I used to have, I, I, I just actually, I just recently sold my sh the two shares I had um, on Costco last year because I'm like, the dividends coming from this doesn't, I was such, the capital gains was so much that I'm just like, I'd rather just keep the capital gains. The, the dividends don't really cut it. So I sold it. Um, but honestly, from what I'm seeing, we'll see what the calculator says. I, you might actually consider, I'm actually consider buying this back a little bit now. And especially now that they have fallen down a little bit. So yeah, but that's my story on, on Costco. You weren't expecting that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah. So let's keep reading this. Uh, so net income for the quarter was 1.74 billion versus the 1.477 billion a year ago. Merchandise inventory at the end of the quarter was 17.08 billion versus 16.65 billion on September 3rd. At the end of the quarter, Costco operated a total of 875 warehouses. It actually doesn't even feel like that much in comparison to other to other places, including 603 in the United States and Puerto Rico, 108 in Canada, 40 in Mexico. 33 in Japan, 29 in the UK, 18 in Korea, it's not specified if it's north or south, um, 15 in Australia, 14 in Taiwan, 6 in China, 4 in Spain, 2 in France, and 1 in, and one in Iceland, New Zealand, and Sweden. <laughs> the pity one. Iceland's a small country, so I'm not surprised by that. Well, I mean, Iceland is essentially just, you know, you walk, you walk 20 feet and you reach the other side of the island. So, you know. Okay, Costco did not announce any. Costco did not announce a membership fee increase with its earnings release. Costco is set to hold a conference call at five o'clock. Okay, so this was, this probably came out before the conference call where they did announce it. Shares of Costco fell two point five six in after after hours trading after hitting a fifty two week high during the regular session. So, there you guys have it. There's the comparable sales and looking at the overall summary when it comes to the earnings. Costco non gap EPS of three dollars and seventy one beats by seven cents revenue of. 58.44 billion beats by, sorry, sorry, misses by 690 million. Even though it misses analyst estimates, the revenue is still up 5.7% year over year. And we already read this when it came to the adjusted, adjusted comparable sales. Looking at this though, net sales for, for the company were negatively impacted by approximately one one and one half percent for the quarter and by approximately one half percent for the first 24 week of fiscal 2024 from the shift of the fiscal calendar as a result of the 50 of the 53rd week last year and, and then we got all the operations again so yeah let's take a look at their actual earnings report and uh, i mainly just want to see what the ceo said most of this guys we already read um i want to see what the ceo said it, the, the, does he not have a comments here uh hello does he not have comments? Let me open up the um, the PDF. Maybe I could see it better on the on the, on the PDF. It's a lot harder to read too. But um, do we not have the CEO comment? Yeah, we do not have the CEO comment. I don't believe. Let me let me just look up CEO. I guess uh, chief. Yeah, there's no CEO comments. That's mm. surprising. Usually it never happens. Oh, well, guys, we already read most of this, so I'm not really going to go over it again and waste time. Um, you know, link is in the description below if you guys would like to read it for yourselves. So let's jump into another calculator. I think this is what most people want. She sh shout out to the 24 of you guys watching. Let's read a little bit of chats before we move on, Mike. Yeah. Yep. So let's see. What was the last one that we saw? So the $1.50 cheap hot dogs from Junji. Uh, uh, Ghost says gold, silver. And then Junji says, the chickens are gross, though. You can tell they used uh, growth hormones. I still buy them, <laughs> but meh. Yeah, I mean, it's, if it's, you know, if, I always say, I always say, you don't buy McDonald's because it tastes good. You buy McDonald's because it's cheap. It's cheap and edible, right? Um, 
let's see. Costco is a big store, though. So much land usage. Yep. Are, are solar panels worth it? We could get into that after we're done with the discounted free cash flow. And then Junji says to uh, HC, you better read the contract you sign if you're if you're going to do it. I got screwed by mine when they didn't work for a year. Junji, you own a house? Or because Junji, Junji, do you own a house? I wasn't aware that you own a house, my guy. I don't know if you do. Anyways, let's take a look at now, guys, the discounted free cash flow. We got the ticker for COST, market cap of $322 billion, PE of 49.48, current share price of $725.56. Uh, they do pay out the dividend of $4.08. Now, this dividend isn't necessarily anything special. I, li I live with my parents. Okay, so, you're, so you and your parents probably got the, the solar panels together. Got it, got it, got it, got it. I thought you owned your own house when you, the, the way you were explaining that. But, okay, so dividends, the current dividend yield of 0.52%, really, really tiny. However, that five-year CAGR is looking really good, 12.34, dividend growth of nine, 19 consecutive years. But what makes Costco's dividend really, really great is sometimes they do, actually more than sometimes, occasionally, they do a special dividend. In January, uh, November 30th, 2020, they did a $10 per share special dividend. Think about that. If you own 10 shares, that's a hundred bucks. <laughs> that's a hundred dollars. In addition to, of course, their no normal dividend as well, right? That's a hundred dollars, man. In 2023, they did a special dividend and they raised it from 10 to $15. <laughs> this is why a lot of people love Costco. Their capital gains, right? The overall just movement on the stock, but also the fact that they do special dividends on occasion. And you can see that they do special dividends, you know, occasionally, right? I mean, the last, so the last time they did it prior to 2020, it was, do they do it every three years? Kind of, right? So we got 2015, 2017, I know it's every two, then 2020, and then 2023. So it's like almost once every two, three years, essentially. So it's, a lot of people like that. A lot of people like that. So let's take a look at this. X dividend date, oh, unfortunately, X dividend date passed as of February 1st. Payout date was on February 16th, and they pay their dividends quarterly. But guys, don't just, there's two things when it comes to dividend. Don't try to snipe a big yield, and don't try to snipe the X dividend date. Snipe valuation, right? That's what I like. I like sniping valuation. The dividends will eventually come, time will pass, you will eventually get through another X dividend date where it is going to count valuation matters a million times more than sniping a high yield or than sniping an ex-dividend date. So this is the way that I like to look at things when it comes to that. Based on the current shares outstanding and this $4.08, they pay out almost $1.81 billion in dividends every single year. Take their 10-year average free cash flow, so subtract this, you have $1.85 billion. Take their last year's free cash flow, Mike, look at that difference. <laughs> Dang. Look at that difference. Take their last year's free cash flow, and subtract the exact $1.81 billion in dividends. Hang on a second, I'm cleaning my glasses. They're left with almost $5 billion. <laughs> That's crazy. These payout ratios for the last year is less than 27%, 26.83, and for the 10-year average, 49.5. Guys, this is amazing. This is why they're able to afford that special dividend. All right. This is absolutely incredible. I love to see it. Now, fundamentals time, Mike. Are you ready for this? Yep. Do I even need to say anything for the first one? <laughs> nope. Yup. Look at that. That's the net income, my guy. That is the net income. And again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys right here that I did put in the numbers correct. Junji. Junji, I need... I need the thing, please, to be automated so that way I don't have to be doing this every single time. By the way, he's the one that's helping me do it. Um, mm. So, guys, if uh, if you don't see me have the automatic thing, the automatic uh, thing where I get everything with the, with all the fundamentals, blame Junji. He's the one that's helping me do it. Just FYI. But here you go. There it is on the 10-year scale. So, yeah, these numbers are correct, and that looks insane going from 2.06 billion dollars 10 years ago to the one year ago value and which by the way let me actually uh show so hang on a minute, sorry uh where am i where am i there we go so this one year ago value is 2023 this one year ago value is 2023 so and you can see that the trailing 
they end their year weird. They end it in September. But the, but the trailing has already surpassed that of September 2023. So, yeah. So, 10 years ago of $2.06 billion. Two one year ago of $6.3 billion. Increase of 206% pretty much consistently increasing they had one little bit of a downturn from nine to eight years ago but honestly it was a couple million it was what like 27 million dollar uh yeah 27 million dollars guys honestly that's no that's absolutely nothing this is an easy easy hundred percent free cash flow now the free cash flow is a little bit more choppy um but we can see here 10 years ago of 1.9 let's say two billion dollars to one year ago of $6.75 billion, increase of 239%, with an average of $3.66 billion. So what do you think about this one? Oh, you got a lot, like you mentioned, I got a lot of chop, but it's two years ago, you just kind of like ebbs and flows of contraction of e two economy. years ago, two years ago, interest rates. Yeah, so they're kind of just reshuffling, lowering inventory, not taking on as much inventory, rebalancing to well, it. Well, also remember what free cash flow is, right? Yeah, cash from operations versus expenditures. Not versus, less. Um, less. So if we take a look at specifically two years ago, you can see that they did come down a little bit in their cash from operations um, while kind of remaining with the same CapEx. So I, yeah, I would actually argue uh, attribute it to interest rates at that point less people buying stuff right remember last year we're holding inventory because remember this isn't 2022 this is not 2023 so and this is taking the big brunt of 2022 like the beginning of 2022 um mm -hmm. and 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 the latter end of 2021 right from august of 2021 to essentially well not august but september of 2021 to august of 2022 so it is taking a big brunt of possibly interest rate hikes which probably caused that so what do you think? Um, I, I'm gonna say like a 75, just because it's. I looked at the trailing, uh huh, and it's looking like it's gonna come in lower than the one year ago. Just because For... the, ex the expenditures are going up while cash from operations is going down. Well, no, remember the year isn't over yet. This thing ends in September. There's a lot of months left till September, my guy. And summer's yeah, coming up. You got Fourth of July. You know, yeah, you but got it's trailing call, so it'll roll. And so again, you don't know what it's going to be now, but you can always upgrade it later. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Which is why, by the way, I don't take the I, I do not take into account the trailing twelve months for that reason, because it's always changing. So I I always like to take the one year ago value. So you said seventy five. Honestly, I kind of do agree with that. I'm going to say a seventy five percent as well. Revenue, very, very similar to that of the income. I'm pretty sure I don't have to say anything here. We got 10 years ago of 112.64 billion to one year ago of 243, uh, sorry, 242.3 billion, increase of 115.1%. Really nice consistently increasing. It's 100%. Yep. Okay, great. I'm just I'm just making sure. I don't want to say something and then you're like, no, it's not. So average uh, total assets as a reference, you can see that is increasing. And the trailing 12 months is slightly decreasing, but it's a trailing. Uh, liabilities is also increasing, and the trailing 12 months is also increasing. Average uh, total assets minus total liabilities. Uh, you can see that it is increasing. It's choppy, right? It's going up and down, but it's a, it's, it's a, it's a box store, right? It's a, it's one of the biggest grocery chains. I wouldn't say grocery chains, but it's, it's a box store, right? Yep. So I look at this, and I'm just like, they're very... From a fundamental perspective, from, from, from looking at the assets... This is looks this looks pretty healthy, right? Average total assets of forty eight point seven four billion, liabilities of thirty two point five billion, with a difference of sixteen billion dollars. What do you think? So, kind of coming back down towards like the median, but again, their their box store. It's like it's kind of expected. Like they're increasing their size, kind of managing debt properly. So, if I look they know at how this, to manage I'm not that, surprised. They know how to manage debt one hundred percent. Yeah, so, so to me, it's what you want to see from a company like this. So it's going to be a 95. 95? I agree yep. with that. I agree with that. All right. Cash flow minus the liabilities. Well, we are seeing that their liabilities are very in consistently increasing while their cash flow has been, once again, a little bit choppy, still increasing, though. Not surprising that the cash flow minus the liabilities is looking like this. They've only had a few instances of this getting better. Um, and actually, the main one is just from two to one year ago, where 
One year ago, it's at negative 37.2 billion. The average being negative 28.3 billion. What do you think? And they're increasing stores. That's what yeah. I attributed to. So yeah, it's, and China's it's a big not, one. It's not that bad for Costco, right? For the sector and what it is. So I'm going to say 80. Let me, let me actually pull up a quick video uh, because I just said something that maybe a lot of people may, may want to see. Have you ever seen the first Costco opening up in China uh, video? No. Let me let me look that up really quick. So first Costco uh, to open in China. This is not China town uh, to open up. Okay, I think this is it. Let me pull this up. Uh, is this it? Hang on a minute. Let me just... Yeah, this is it. So, let me... Can you hear the no mic? Mike, can I you think hear I it? I heard it. Okay, yeah. you heard it. Okay, great. So, here is, guys, the first... China's first Costco opens to scenes of chaos. Oh, sorry. You guys, you guys can see that. Um, hang on. Uh, China's first Costco opens to scenes of chaos. That's in Shanghai. Oh, Lord. oh my God. I will never complain on the Costco checkout ever again. The store had to close early due to overcrowding. I, th I think we pretty much got the gist of it. Guys, um, you know, I don't like China, obviously. Uh, but... The, uh, Junji said, the growing middle class in China, I worry if they had a Black Friday. Oh, forget about it, dude. <laughs> oh, forget about it. But, you know, I don't like China. But if if, if Costco is still opening up more and more stores, and they don't even have that many. They don't even have a thousand yet worldwide. Odds are, if they continue to open up stores in China... While I don't like that, Costco is still an American company. I can't really fault them for wanting to expand it into the Chinese market, as they should, right? As is more profits for them. But if they open up more stores in China, you're going to get more of that, and their profits are going to go through the roof. So, and, and not to mention, what about stores, for example, in like Africa, right? That's a big, big market as well, too. So there's a bunch of growth to be had when it comes to Costco. So I look at that, and um, you, the reason why I had to play that video is because you said store openings. Uh -huh. when it comes to this so what do you think of the grade uh i still think it's like an 85 85 okay oh hang on a minute there we go 85 i'm gonna say i i'm not i'm not gonna go anywhere near that because okay i do understand the store openings i get that i'm gonna go with like a 50 percent when it comes to this one because i still would like for this thing to get better I did, if the free castle was consistently increasing i would give it i would give it higher but the fact that it's choppy but then again, we know that we... Okay, you know what? Fine. Dear Lord. 70%. I'm, I'm going to raise it to 70%. All right. Shares outstanding. Now, this one to me came as a surprise. But not really. Because it's not even that bad. And not to mention that they are... They've always been really, really expensive to begin with. 10 years ago, of 437.7 million shares to today of 443.5 million shares. In 10 years, guys. In 10 years, they raised their shares... One and a third of a percent. That's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> That's literally it's zero. Yeah, it's flat. It's essentially in ten years. Now, if you would have said that in like five years, I would have been like, okay, it's still not bad, but you know, it's it, it's it's still fine. But ten years, that's essentially zero. That's essentially flat. So they, you can see that this 0.16 percent increase is what they do across the board. Pretty much every single year. So, Mike, remember that? 0.16? All right. Okay. So, all right. And overall, grade for you? Uh, 100, just because you know what you're getting. Mm, okay, 100. Got you. Got you, got you, got you. Got you, got you, got you. You want to uh, check on chat? No. Just give me one second. Just give me one second. Okay, there we go. So, so is it 100? Yep. 
Okay, 100. Yeah, I'm also going to give it 100% as well. And lastly, cash and equivalents. They currently hold $9.1 billion with an average of $8.13 billion. Um, overall grade, 90% for me, 92% for you. It's an A company, right? This is, this is yep. an A company. And this Ghost, we will company. take a look at Rivian and Apple after this. Um, and I'm pretty sure he's saying LOL because, guys. I know. I know. Dude, if you do that, you've done that now two consecutive uh, streams. You do it one more time, I'm, I'm muting you forever. I'm serious. You're muted for, for the rest of the stream. If you do that one more time, I'm, I'm muting you forever. Because I don't mind shouting out channels, but you can't just plop links. That's not, that's not cool. That's rude. Seriously. So, a, a company, guys, is there really much of anything else to say? The big, the biggest thing would just be I really wish their cash flow was a little bit more consistent, but honestly, it's not even that bad, right? It's not even that bad. So, calculator time. Ah, uh, you guys are curious to see what valuation this thing should be? Mike, that was that was a question for you. <laughs> so, Costco HC says, let's see, AC says, uh, this was this expensive. was a right. AC says it's expensive. However, the calculator is actually saying something completely different. Let me bring this all the way up. That way it resets and then bring it back down. The discounted free cash flow on a 10-year perspective is saying $623, not adjusting for debt, $1,267 adjusting for debt. Mm. Mm. Now let's see what the required rate of return is going to be. Well, let's input some numbers, right? What do you want to start with first? Normally, guys, uh, I had this. Hang on. Normally, we had this at like 10%. But I think for the 10-year calculator, guys, we're also going to start changing them as well. So, I yeah. would say 10, 15, 20. So, okay. So, is that always what it's going to be from now on? I think um, unless it's like a tech company, then we increase it. But it, like for a standard company, 10%, that's S&P. And then like 15, 20, you know, better years on the like maximum, right? So kind so, of matching that if you're beating it. So now putting in the required rate of return, the prices are going to fall, right? Because the more return you want to have, obviously, the less you have to pay today. The more the more you pay for something today, the less returns you're going to have in the future. Now this falls down to um, $225.43 to $173.73. Now adjusting for debt and $471.37 to $368. Again, the reason why this one is hot, this is the high assumption, but the reason why this is lower is because it has a higher required rate of return. So, yep. predict a sure buyback. They've been zero doing... Zero across the board. You really want zero across the board. I don't think they're going to change it. They haven't done zero, though. Oh, In they 10 don't years? Yeah. Okay. All right, so two... One zero. Two one zero. I I I I was gonna say something along the lines of like negative one and a half, one, and then half, or do one. Yeah, do the, the no no because then you, if they increase, so you you want some variance. Okay. You want some variance. So basically negative two, negative one, and then zero, right? Yep. Okay, and now for the revenue growth. They've been, you no, know, in the 10 year, again, it's very consistent. I love it. In 10 years, they've done, on average, every year, 11.5%. So what do you think? So it's a pretty simple one, 10, 12, 14. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that as well. Guys, very, very interesting, isn't it? So not adjusting for debt, we got 477 on the low assumption to 448 for the highest, uh, 449, essentially 450 for the highest assumption. Adjusting for debt though, that looks good. 974 to 918. See, this is why I kind of just like to have the recovery return the same <laughs> because now you have these numbers and you're just like, wait a minute, why why does it cost more for the highest assumption? But you know, we, we could just change this afterwards. But with a margin, but look at this guys, 900, essentially 900. Uh, yeah, see, that's the reason it's just, yeah, we, I think we should keep it the same, Mike. Just, just, just pick a number right, and keep the recovery. How much? 15. 15%. Okay. Oh, not that one. <laughs> Other one. No, don't mess that one up, please. Yeah, because then you you, you you see what I mean? The numbers get messed up. Yeah. Where, where, yeah, where for good. the lowest assumption is 974, the highest assumption is 918, but for the median is 8, 899. Doesn't really make sense because we're changing the required rate of return. Yeah. So let's keep the required rate of return at 15%. Um, Still beating the S&P 500, right? So, yes. 
Now with this is 262.34 on the low end to 351.55, dollars $351.55 on the high end. And then adjusting for debt, 544 to 723. Look at that final number though. It is very, we're, we're essentially there. Right, we're essentially there. Margin of safety of 510, 15, 8, uh, 463 to 687. Interesting. Because 8C, I get that you saying that um, it's expensive now. Not according to this. In fact, even for the median assumption, 627, it's only $100 off from what the current price is now. I would actually argue that because of this dip, as Go uh, Ghost was saying, by the dip, um, I would actually just start buying at around me, not telling you what to do. I would start buying at around this price tag of 725 and as it falls, dollar cost average into it. You know? Thoughts? I I don't well, well I'll give you my thoughts when we get to the section just so I can show you. A little no bit problem. More. No problem. Guys, looking at this dividend, because they do pay the nice dividend and it's very affordable. Putting in six thousand two hundred and twenty-five dollars, they pay out thirty-five dollars. Again, this is mainly this isn't anything special. It's all about, um, it's all about the, uh, the capital gains, right? The overall returns and that special dividend too. So, yeah, that's Costco for you, Mike. It is your turn, good sir. All right. So, first of all, we're gonna go to a simple graph, and then I'm gonna talk about some areas that are important. Costco had a massive sell-off on volume today. If you just look at it, it's one of the highest volume candles that we've seen in. Going back to COVID, or yeah, no, not COVID. Going back to 2022, and then coming back to around COVID, it's actually equivalent to the COVID candles of volume. So there is a lot of people selling. Again, when I have moves that are straight up like this, I'm looking at market makers with options because Costco does have options. They're not they're not the most liquid, but they have liquidity in them. So. Again, this could be something similar to everything else where market makers are just basically um, deleveraging or basically coming back to the median. However, if we just look here, you, the angle of ascent has been violated. So now we have to look at lower price points where we could find support. The first one that I come to mind is the 50-day moving average and then subsequently the 200. But also the pivot point right here that we bounced off of that projected us on the A to B pattern on the way up, which you could have considered this A to B. That completed a long time ago. Or you could be sending up another A to B pattern on the way up here hypothetically, if you were assuming this is your starting point, there's your pivot, come maybe down to the 50, projects up to about $855. Again, that would be confirmed once you trade the new all-time highs and get a blue sky breakout. So now what do I think is gonna happen? Well, this is a pretty parabolic move, so why don't we just slap a fib on it and see where the 60% correction lands. It's around $634 coincidentally around an area that's pretty important and also a number that we talked about just a moment ago that that's usually where you get the retracement and that would allow the 200 uh, day moving average to come up higher now the ultimate buying point on costco would be the 200 weekly moving average sitting right now at 475 dollars uh, that'd be like the steal of everything because you know break through all the structure come down to there and bounce off that would be an interesting point now, jumping over to this, Lex Algo kind of tells me support areas. Your first support is going to be a 714. I think you're going to violate it just because you're coming down with such momentum and the volume percentage is not high enough. That for a 643 number that we talked about, or 645 to be exact, there's a lot of volume sitting there and that means a lot of support. So that's where I'd be looking. Maybe dollar cost averaging starting at the 680 point and then maybe picking up some more at 645 if I was to build a position in this. Now, if I go over to the week, we can see that it's extremely overbought, uh, reversal on smart money flow and still has the impulse. The impulse hasn't ended. So there's still people from hedge funds and all that going into this. When that impulse ends, that's when I think you get the reversal down. But that reversal would probably come down to that 543 or even that 474 area that Costco definitely could be an interesting point there. Just clearing up some lines here real quick that we had previously. So All right. basically the calculator and your charge are lining up fairly nicely. It's because it's concentrations of high volume. So that's right. where people found previous valuation, right? So around 536, 
four seventy four. You know, two two hundred weekly moving average thing around there, and parabolic move. So like, I'm not saying that you go to let's say four six forty six, and that the bottom can't get deeper. It can, but you don't look at it until you get to that point where you have evidence right. that's going down. Like for me, I could see, you know, corrective wave on this, uh, let's say it goes down, let's say 20% from the highs or let's say 15, 15 or 18, right? Targeting around that uh, 642 area, that's 18% correction. that will be okay for a company going up this parabolic and maybe shaking out some of that, like run the system as we say, right? Okay. Yep. That's it. And it's pretty interesting, like their move, like on this amount of volume, on that earnings, that surprised me a little bit. But I'm going to, you know, it could be market makers basically saying, finally, let's get out of it. Uh, similar to like, you know, how they did NVIDIA today, just not digressing to it. But, you know, everyone's sick and tired of basically buying, having, being forced to buy NVIDIA right. and market makers with Costco. Maybe same story. So that's it. Yeah. Okay. Guys, all in all, Costco, I mean, if this thing continues to fall, I like it. I'm I, I'm not buying stocks right now. But, oh my goodness. I'm actually kind of happy the market is going up. Not even going to lie. Because it makes me feel less guilty. <laughs> yeah, that you're not participating in the craziness. In the crazy, yeah, pretty much. Because if markets right now were crashing and I, and I can't buy stuff because of, obviously, other obligations... Um, I feel really awful. So the fact that most of the market is going up, I feel good because I'm just like, okay, at least I'm not missing out. But companies like this, Broadcom falling, I'm just like, I want to start the position in them. But yeah, all in time all, though, tell. yeah, time will tell. Obviously, obviously. But guys, that pretty much all that pretty much sums up for all the companies that we wanted to cover. Uh, now let's take a look at chat because I I have been seeing you guys. Uh, this whole entire time. Um, so let's see. Um, HC is asking for Rivian. So here's the thing: I can't cover Rivian. They only have. I'm I looking. At, I know you can, but here's the reason why I can't cover Rivian. They have one, two, three, kind of four numbers. That's it. I can't yeah. really do that. Uh, and these two numbers are the same, right? Because we, they just finished 2023, so it, it's not even a thing. Yeah, I, I, yeah, sorry, HC, but I cannot do a discount. Even the five year one, I can't even do a five year one when it comes to this. There's it's just nine updated. I like my opinion of Rivian. Oh boy. So, yeah, so sorry about that. We would just have to wait a little bit more on that. Um, so, yeah. I'll pull you up for Rivian, good sir. Yeah. Sorry, right. Ghost in advance. I'm sorry for saying this, but. Oh, I it looks like Lumen. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say that. No, 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 no. Lumen actually had some bullishness in it. All right, so go on. You can, You're good. You can interpret what I'm about to say. NYCB. Um, I don't know. No, I yeah, don't. I don't okay, know. So I don't know. Go. Rivian, since the IPO, has made lower lows. When we were back here, I remember the Rivian video I made. I said it looks like a descending wedge, and I could see bullishness from it, right? So uh, descending, uh, descending wedge broke bullish, right? I said, okay, Rivian actually looks constructive as long as it stays above the 200. And then just crap. Words. Your low here has now been blown out. You made a lower low and lower highs. So you are continuing the pattern that you have been set on long term. And there is no evidence that you are going to reverse. Meaning you on top of had a gap on earnings. You tried filling the gap, but you haven't filled it completely. Could be an interesting short term play like, you know, if I was looking to short it, probably that 50 day once it hits its head gives me a better risk to reward ratio there. Gap fill, that could be an interesting play. Again, warning, it could not maybe go all the way on that gap fill. So again, it's where price never existed. So it relatively should move easily through there, but it's definitely risky. And to me, I don't like the company just making lower lows. That That's my thing. I'd rather see empirical evidence that it's turning bullish on a longer term time frame. So like the weekly, um, making not lower lows on the weekly. And this looks like a gigantic M forming right here, which usually if it breaks down is going to break down to basically like penny stock territory. So that's my problem with Rivian. Now, 
you could make an investment in it. It could go sideways from here. I just don't have any evidence that it's going to go up. There's no support zones. You hit the reversal zone. Yeah, you could be coming back up to fill this gap, but then what, right? Head into next earnings, and then if they have bad earnings, then like where, where does someone draw the line in the sand of this company is no longer um, a viable option, right? Because I don't want it to turn into like Lumen that basically went from like not company, not company, to, not company, but stock. Yeah, like when when does the stock not become viable, right? So if you keep blowing out the lows, where do you draw the line at saying I'm done? That, that that's my only right. concern, right? So right. I don't criticize people for what they invest, but um, and then it's, it goes saying my cost per share fourteen dollars and twenty nine cents. So I have I have Rivian just bought a bunch more at tw- at ten dollars ninety five cents. Okay. So your your ATs. your gap is essentially your break even point, right? So okay. So the question is, would you cut it if it makes a new low? That, he'll, that's probably, my he'll probably theory. double down honestly because he's he says Rivian has new models coming out too Rivian isn't going under Bezos won't let that happen uh ac says was worried about going under that's why i didn't buy um but might get 100 shares i mean look i if it was me if it was me um hc instead of taking that 100 shares of uh of uh what would that be like 109 dollars and 50 cents for 100 shares um, right? No, it'd be no a thousand. Sure, it'd be twelve uh twelve hundred. The twelve hundred. Sorry. Um, so twelve hundred dollars. I would rather I, I me if it was you, uh, like if I was in your position, I'd rather take the twelve hundred bucks or eleven hundred bucks or whatever it is right right now, and buy Costco with it. You now, this is me. Yeah, I would do well. Yes. I kind of disagree with that. I think no. you have better share appreciation possible with Rivian. Well, I'm not talking about Costco. share. Right, but but Costco itself is a better company from a yeah. fundamental perspective, right? You need to understand where yeah, I'm looking at it from. I have to pick between that value. Like, I don't know. It's, I like I don't I, like buying companies with the hope that it goes up. I, I like buying companies because their fundamentals look great. Yeah, which, again, but like... Costco's expensive. Rivian's not really fundamentally I don't sound, see, so it's like it depends. I mean, it depends. What I don't you like put. either option. That's my problem. I don't like either option. Well, look, Costco's Costco's is expensive depending on what your assumptions are. You get me? Eh, parabolic move up. It kind of defines expensive. I'm just saying. Yeah, but um, here the thing is like. But to me, just I don't want this to turn into like a lumen for you guys where you keep averaging share down and just keeps making lower low. You got to have a line in the sand where you're willing to walk away and take the loss. Because if you don't, that's how you can blow up the position and Again, then do as, do as you see fit. But it's just my two cents on the situation. Right. And, and that's why I'd rather just buy Costco. I'm not saying put all your money into it. I'm saying dollar cost average into it because of the fact that it's a better company. I don't know. 100 cheeseburgers sounds like a good option too. That also works as well, Junji. <laughs> that also works yep. as well. Um, yep. But for that, but I mean, if you buy 100 cheese, cheeseburgers from, um, from, from from Costco, all you're doing is helping their profit metrics. So, yep. you know, at that point, just buy the stock. <laughs> you know? Well, that, 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 that was funny. That was very yeah, well timed. That was pretty funny. I love Junji. He's great. He's great. Yeah, but yeah, we actually went to uh, college together, Mike. I've known oh, Junji yeah. since high school. All right. Yeah. All right. So, remember. huh? But I do want to cover uh, Apple next. Okay. I just want to talk about one thing with Apple. Okay. And we will cover this in the weekend deep dive, but um, Apple is sitting on a boatload of support right now. So 167 all the way to 160 is massive volume support. So... Apple, now, if it breaks 160, you a goner, all, all the way to about, like, I would say 100. You're going to be a goner then. No, actually a goner to 146. So it's sitting on support now. It breaks support around 165-ish for the week, and then you're pretty much a goner all the way. No, I take that back. You're a goner all, all the way to 100. So if Apple recovers then it'd be interesting right and but again don't tell the chart what it's doing just watch what the chart's doing right now it's in a point that it could be an interesting buying point and being bullish uh especially with the price movement but again if cpi comes out knocks it out and basically crushes everyone 
Apple's already weak and that's not going to necessarily help anything. So so do I'm, that as you may. So uh, Junji, right now I'm trying to put all the numbers into Apple. Junji, this is what I'm talking about, my dude. I am I am struggling right now with putting every single number into the calculator. Again, my guy, please help me. Help me. Ghost, I have tell on my watch list at this point because of what you've been telling me about it. <laughs> he just won't stop. Won't st- well, can't stop. Won't stop. He's got some pretty solid recommendations. He does. So like, uh, he, does. he does. He does. He does. Like honestly, he has been really, really good. But I'm gonna do guys a quick discount of free cash flow on Apple on the 10 year, which we've never done before. So that's why I'm doing it really, really quickly. I'm just grabbing the metrics that are important for it, and that's it. I'm not gonna take a look at the over- I just love how mental, but, the head and shoulders on Apple that was I was talking to I was blue in the face finally played out. I'm like. <sighs> That, that, that one I'm, I did not expect just because I'm like, it's so damn obvious and it's not doing it. I'm like, it's not going to play out. It's not going to play out. And then plays plays out. I'm just like, huh. Fantastic. You want to do a quick discount of free cash flow on Apple? And then Junji the says, fine, I'll work on it on Sunday. <laughs> Thank you, Junji. Thank you. Uh, you want to do a quick discount of free cash flow on uh Yeah, on well, Apple? we can take a look at it. Just, you know. Yeah, yeah, just, just the just kind of free cash flow, not, not the graphs, basically. Because yeah. right. this will be on the 10-year, which is something that we've never done before. Right. Um, Vamos. What's that? Vamos. You're not Spanish. Stop it. All right. So let's uh, stop appropriating my culture. Um, so let's take a look at let's take a look at uh, Apple really quickly. Uh, let me just take away all of this. You want to? Okay, so. Here's Apple on the discounted free... Did it update? Let me just refresh just to be on the safe side. This is Apple, guys, on a 10-year perspective. So, oh, hang on a minute. Let me change that to that. Hang on. Okay. And I do that, by the way, so that way uh, it fits perfectly in on the screen. <laughs> For the says, uh, low, my canceled RIP. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so guys, here is the here is the discounted free cash flow for Apple on a ten year, which we've never done before. So, what do you think about this? Forty dollars and fifty six, uh, and then adjusting for debt, eighty three seventy six. Yeah, twenty percent uh, rate of return. You want a twenty percent rate of return for yeah. Apple across the board? It's the most weighted stock ever. Yes, you better if, it, if it's, it's number two. It's, you're right. I'll give you that one. It has been number one for the longest. Now overtaken by Microsoft, but leveraged company and people's portfolios all so right. if i'm gonna be compensated for that risk i want more money all right fair enough fair enough so 20 across the board and on the average so do, do the shares now they've been buying back 34 percent of shares in the past 10 years and these shares by the way let me actually show you the numbers of shares they're in the billions still so they had you know they could still afford to buy back a they're little bit more going down they are they slowing are down slowing. they are slowing down but it's 15 billion shares they could still buy back you yeah, I mean? so they're going to buy back at probably like 1% per year. Is well, what remember, you're this is in the next 10 years, though. We're not talking about something I as... Know, but, okay, so if you do 1% per year, that's approximately 10% over the course of 10 years. So you can assume uh, low, let's say 10, 12, and 14. So, so it gives you enough variance in there. If buy back more, buy back less. Okay, perfect. And now for the revenue, it's Apple. I have a feeling that you wanna- we're going to get 130 do you want to? <laughs> do you want to? Oh, do I have that sneaky suspicion. Do you want that? Which will be the exact price that Warren Buffett likes to buy at. I know hmm. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so let me show you the, the revenue increase, though, just so that way you can see. It's not consistent, consistent, but it's consistent enough, right? Yeah, you can you can underassume it, especially with their stupid idea of um, Apple oh, headset, stupid goggles. Yeah. That was, that's gonna flop. Yeah, they haven't reinvented anything with the iPhone, so I I see a lull in there. So let's say the lull. It probably will I'm not get to 130. By the way. Eight, ten, and twelve. <laughs> yeah, essentially. <laughs> Hello, Warren Buffett's number. <laughs> it, it's it's it it's like uh, you know this stuff works. That's funny. <laughs> That's just funny. And the irony, I said 108 and then we're getting 105. I'm just like, huh. Uh, you know, accumulate under 130. Someone said that. That's really, really smart. I wonder what. I'm, it's almost like Warren Buffett knows what he's doing. 
<laughs> it's, it's almost, almost like, like it's almost like he's work. Yeah, it's almost like he's um and by the way, he doesn't even use this kind of free cash flow, I don't think. I think he uses something else. But I think he just reads earnings report day in and day out, and therefore he comes up with a price. We're using this kind of free cash flow approach, and it literally comes out to be the same. Yep. Yeah, there's and there's just nothing else to say about that. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's it's around the levels that I was saying are 105, 108 is where I was seeing support, and I'm like, that's like bargain support. So he's accumulating 130 to 108, and yeah, that's just. That's I just love how it makes sense. I love how when discounted free cash flows fundamentals, in general, line up perfectly, are similarly perfectly right. It's not going to be exactly to the cent, but closely enough. That it's within the margin of error. Um, so, that that they both match up with technicals. That to me, I I love that. By the way, bought ten more shares, one hundred and seventy. You're sitting on a lot of support there. Yeah, like a lot of volume support. So that's true. That's not that's an interesting place to like. If you're dollar cost averaging, that's not a bad place. You, Junji, no. Junji, Junji, you're absolutely right. Rich man knows what to do with money. Maybe he should he should manage our economy. That's why. Oh, no, he told you. No, he told you how to solve the debt crisis. He he told us that like many many years ago. I love I love his solution. What did he say? I don't even remember what he said. Oh, he said I can fix the national debt in five minutes. <laughs> no, he said that in our interview. He's what? like I can fi fix the national debt in five minutes. What's the solution? You know what his solution was? What? It's brilliant. I mean, like just spoken like a true Chad. Go on. Or right, if. If the national debt exceeds GDP by more than three point uh, by five percent, I believe the number it was either three point five or five percent. Okay. It's a very small number. Okay. Uh, all members of Congress are ineligible for re-election. Yeah, I think that would solve a lot of problems. Like, I think that would literally solve a lot of problems. Yep. Instantly solve the national debt. Instantly, instantly, essentially get banned from uh, from re-election at that point. Yeah, no, that's what for you said. Life. You're, for you're life. For life. Eligible. For you're life. Ineligible for re-election. And this includes House members. This includes Senate members too. No, he said the whole Congress. Perfect. The whole Congress can go yeet out the door. Yeet. Love it. Next. Uh, <laughs> it goes to 160. I buy 10 more. Yeah, see, so that you're you're essentially dollar cost averaging, which is which is great. Yeah. Right? In a zone. Right. Like you got a zone range and yeah. But that's incredible that your graphs are literally telling you the exact same number as my num as my calculator here. The only thing, the only yeah, thing that I wish that I had, the only thing that I wish that I had was a faster way to get this numbers. June Jeep. So yeah, <laughs> you're gonna beat him over the head with that. I know. Well, you know, I'll pay you, Junji. I'll even pay you for this, my dude. I don't mind. I'll pay you. Um, I'll send you a check in the mail. I'm not, and I'm not joking. I will do it um, if you help me out with this. Because at this point in the game, you know, we are trying to uh, not even term limits, dude. No, no, no. Warren Buffett wants complete, just, just yeeting every single member, good or bad. Get, get yeah. them out of there. I like Trump's plan of using the oil to pay it down. How about, how about this? How about I like that. Don't get me wrong. I like that. How about just let the economy just, just stop, just, no, just I stop like touching Buffett's it. Idea. I like Warren Buffett's, Warren Buffett's idea, idea is essentially let the economy be the economy because you literally cannot spend more than GDP. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. GDP he, is your he, income. He basically is like either you're only going to have your position as long as you're increasing GDP and you can only increase GDP by doing good stuff and smart stuff. So it's like. And you can't exceed you, that. And, and, and no. I would actually go above the fact that you can't. Ex well, I guess you should be able to exceed a little bit of GDP, but nothing too much. That's what he said around three and a half percent. Yeah, three and a half to five. It's it's some ridiculously small percentage. So it's like yeah. okay. So so it's like again, it's like it's I like, perfect. I like the libertarian approach. Just 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 stop meddling in the economy. Just stop. Stop I'm serious. Stop. Let the economy do its thing. You know, the, the uh, stop. Uh, el eliminate all taxation. Right. You want you want income government. You get it through tariffs. That's how it was originally. Right prior to the Civil War, that's how it was. Um, originally, G government got all income through tariffs. Perfect. I but don't you, care. But you, don't you, tax you me. Can, you can spend. You can spend that money, the GDP money, on the military. Like what? you don't understand how like much rot and waste there no, is. No, no, no. no that's what he said. No, no, that's what he's saying. But how are we going to control the world without spending our budget on military? 
uh, being the freaking economical superpower. You can influence countries with the amount of money or growth you would have. Look like, at China. 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 Um, I, I, I work with somebody. Uh, she's Kenyan. And she's just like, China is all over Kenya. But not through military. Unlike the U.S. The U.S. This almost reminds me of like, have you, has anybody ever played Spore? That is an old ass game. But basically in sport, you get to a point where uh, you create like a nation. It's basically like, like following evolution, basically. But like you get to a point where you where you're where you have like a, a, a nation and you either have three ways. You have to conquer the planet and you have three ways to do it through military, through economics or religion. The United States, basically, it's obvious, like in the game, the military one just have to conquer through force. Economics, you buy every other every other nation out there, and through, through religion, you try to convert all of them to your own religion. Uh, the U.S. government has the military part of it, right? They have we have, we have bases all over the world. While well, China is trying to do the economics part, which is buy the world out. That is a much better way and a much, I guess, less hostile way. It's still hostile. Don't get me wrong, but it's a much more. Th there are no guns pointed at anybody, basically. So. Yeah. Uh, and last went through but not least, yeah. What's up? Uh, Go saying uh, Social Security used to be its own fund, but the government needed to pay for the Vietnam War and pass bills to use the money, and it never put back. Of course, government never puts anything back. Dude, Ghost, don't, don't, don't open that can of worms with me right now. I'm serious. I just found out something interesting about Social Security. What that they're trying to uh, make no. it where it's tax free. The fact that it gets taxed. Oh. I had no idea that Social Security was taxed. Yeah. I didn't know that. I was talking yeah, to the CPA. On both ends of the stick. I was talking to the C to the CPA while I was doing taxes. And I asked him, like, does, does Social Security get taxed when you start using it? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah? He's like, yeah. Up to 85%. Depending on what your other income is. I'm like, 85? You're telling me. I'm working right now. Taking... They're taking my my money from my paycheck to Social Security to a program that I will hopefully have. I don't even know anymore. Hopefully have in the future just to get a tax again. Are you are you kidding me? Are are you kidding me? <laughs> and on top of that, if you have a 401k, that gets taxed as well. Yes, Junji, you get taxed on Social Security. Yes. I literally found that out. Yes. I literally found that out a few days ago. Yes, you do get taxed. In fact, Mike, I know we're running a little bit over, but it's Friday. Um, let me, let me, let me do that. L let me, let me show the proof. Does Social Security get taxed? A simple Google search question. There you go. <laughs> let me, let me zoom in for all of you guys. You must pay taxes up to 85% on Social Security benefits if you file federal tax return as an individual and your combined income exceeds $25,000. That's not a lot. <laughs> $25,000. Joint returns and you and your spouse have combined income of more than $32,000. Who knew that? Because I didn't up until a few days ago. <laughs> this is why I'm like, I just want to retire by 35. I want to stop giving these people my social security. I want these, I want to stop giving these people social security money because if I'm going to end up getting a tax anyways, what's the point of even having it? I think it's sort of paying taxes on it back on the late nineties. Yeah. How many, how many of you guys knew that? Honest question. Let me know right now on the live chat before we, before we end the stream. <laughs> Mike, I didn't know that. I knew that for a while. I did not know that. So, come on, you, you underestimate the government's ability to true. steal your money? That's true. That's true. I've, in fact, I told a bunch of people at work about this within the past like week, and they're like, wait, what? <laughs> what, do you, <laughs> what do you mean? Financial illiteracy. And yeah, but to be fair, I didn't know about this either, right? Yeah, but, but okay, but our bar is a little higher than wh theirs. Why isn't this taught? Well, I know why it's not taught, but this is not taught. So, you have Social Security, ta the, the two main sources of income for retirement, 401k, a traditional 401k, and Social Security both get taxed. Why doesn't this make people's blood boil? You know why? It's because they don't know. Yep. So, 
Guys, I think we're pretty much gonna end it here. We did go over a bit, but it's Friday, you know, it's it's uh it's it's been a quite a week, and next week is essentially our last week when it comes to the Rumble partnership. As I said, we're not going to stop, but you know, we would like to um would like to continue it. Uh we'll probably just, uh, only live stream Tuesday, Thursday. Uh just so that way it's not at the beginning of the at the beginning of the of the week, so we have stuff to talk about. And not at the end of the week where there's nothing to talk about. So I think Tuesday and Thursday is a, is a nice one. Um, also, if there's FOMC on like Wednesday or Monday, or usually FOMC is never on Wednesday or Monday. But if we have FOMC uh, CPI on the days that we don't stream, we will stream. Now, when in regards to earnings, that's coming up soon again, Mike. Oh, boy. So we, we are going to cover... Um, live streaming earnings for banks, big tech, etc. We're not going to go the two hour. Well, we may honestly, we usually might do the two hours because usually we cover more than one company or even two companies on earnings, but we'll see. But yeah, yeah that's what's going to happen. Um, Last few chats. Let's see. Keep investing and it will happen. Costco or Apple, which to buy? HC, that's up to you, my dude. It's, I, I really wish I could tell you which to buy. It's it just depends up to what your strategy. Again, it all comes back down to what is IT your strategy. What one of them is that support, based on volume, the other isn't. Again, that that's that's my two cents. My two cents on it. It depends on the fund. It depends on your growth assumption, for the, for the calculator. Yeah. So, you know, search YouTube Amazon Go Riot. Amazon Go, right? It was funny. Couldn't couldn't relate it to Costco. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not going to do that right now, Junji, because we're about to end the stream. So, guys, um, I guess one last uh, final, uh, a few, a few, uh, a few points. Uh, I do have a Discord server. I, I want to beauty it up first. I'll try to release it if I have time. I'll try to release it by Monday. Um, I will make a video of it. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll make a video of it. But um, I do have a I have a Discord server. When that's done, I'll I'll release it. Um, I have to make Mike a moderator, obviously. What else? Is there any other news I wanna I wanna say? Nope. I think that's about it. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. We had a great stream today. Absolutely amazing. Please check out, guys, the video I just released today. Uh, let me actually show that for everybody. The video that I just released today, it's basically me talking about the, um, the what Biden wants to do when it comes to the, um, when it comes to the, whatchamacallit, when it comes to him wanting to subsidize essentially, uh, what's the thing called? Mike, what's the thing called? Subsidize um, the... Uh, first home buyers. Right, first home buyers. Uh, and apparently giving people... Uh, down payment assistance check out this video and spread it because this is not being talked about at all right now it really really isn't and it should be it was kind of just passed by in the in the in the say, say the union nobody really paid much attention to it it needs to be said guys so if you guys could please check this out watch it uh and spread it all over twitter that'd be great because it's really really important for people to know so yeah and with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. It really does help here with the algorithm on Rumble. We got, what, five more, uh, four more days till the Rumble partnership ends. It was yeah. fun. And with that said, guys, like, subscribe, or like, follow, comment. Really does help here. Peace out, and we will see you all next time.